Hello, 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 what's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Thursday to you all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see ya. What is up, Ligrulu? Cabal for Pit, dude, bro, man, guy, Mormon Freeman. How is everyone doing tonight? Tonight, we are Garrus. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, tonight, we are heading to modern to have some more sweet Elish Norn Mother of Machines value. This deck, it's only technically got one Elish Norn, but because we got four Eldritch Evolutions, we should be pretty good at finding it, and we have so many sweet EDBs. It's like four color Elish Norn value pile, essentially, with Wall of Omens and Wall of Blossoms. I'm hyped for this deck. The deck looks like it should draw a ton of cards. What's up, Suspicious? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hopefully, everyone is having a wonderful day. Tuka, buddy. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. No fires. No fires in the deck. What do we need fires for? We got we got mom. Who needs <laughs> who needs fires when we got mom? I mean, I think the main reason we don't have fires is we have a lot of cheap stuff that we really want to chain together. So once we get uh, Elishar on the battlefield, we don't really want to be limited to two spells per turn. We want to be able to have these big chain a bunch of spells, refill our hand, go off style combo turns. So uh, hopefully we get to do some sweet, sweet Mother of Runes action. Also got an Enduring Renewal deck. I don't know if we'll get to I was going back and forth. I was like, ah, oh, should we play Panharmonicon? Well, Elishar and Mother Machines. Should we play Enduring Renewal combo? Should we play Panharmonicon Mom? Should we play Enduring Renewal combo? Eventually, I decided that you can't pass up on Elish Norn, but the Enduring Redual Knack also looks kind of sweet, so I'm sure we'll play that uh, at some point, but anyway, everyone, let's do our reminders. Jump into some games. I mean, do you like Renewal Combo more? Which one Which one would you rather see out of those two decks? Enduring Renewal Combo, uh, you're trying to combo with Enduring Renewal, if that wasn't... <laughs> If that wasn't obvious, but basically Enduring your Renewal is uh, such a weird old card. Uh, you, Whenever a creature goes to the graveyard from the battlefield, you get to bounce it back to your hand. So you can cast Stone Coil Serpents or Walking Ballistas for zero an infinite number of times. Uh, you don't get to draw creatures anymore. But if you have Ultra the Brood, you just mill your opponent out by casting <laughs> by casting the free Walking Ballistas again and again and again and again. What's up, Mormon Freeman? How are you? I mean, we could play that one. If you'd rather see Enduring Renewal combo, I mean, we could do we could do a poll it seems like everyone's saying enduring renewal do people want do people want you know what we'll do a poll we'll, as we're doing our reminders we'll do a poll on which deck we should play and whatever wins will be the deck that we play uh let me see i'm setting the poll up right now new poll what should what oh, i can't type should we play uh mom or enduring renewal all right poll is up for the next three minutes so get your votes in now as we do our reminders uh this is uh this is your chance you can speak as to what we're going to be playing tonight uh, the choice is yours chad the choice is yours as we're doing this uh we'll do some reminders replay youtube that's when we find all the old streams including this one in the future normal youtube uh yesterday <laughs> Did you see the Blade of Shared Souls deck? Oh my goodness, that deck does such cool things. We had a really sweet standard deck. Blade of Shared Souls tomorrow for much of you. We got some more modern coming up. So tons of stuff coming up on the YouTube. Uh, the poll is at the top of the chat. Right now, Mom is winning 60% to 40%. Uh, but it's eh, like nine votes different. So get it in, get it in. How's the cat? It's it's a cat. <laughs> it's very moot. I'm used to dogs. Bear's really simple. Bear is like feed me pat me sometimes if you don't do that i will come and paw you until you do it cats cats are complicated cats is like sometimes it disappears for a day and i don't know where it is but then it just comes back like nothing happened i don't even know cats are weird and moody but it seems good it started to it was pretty funny last night like i was in the kitchen and there's kind of like a little a little corner by where the refrigerator was bear was in the kitchen by me i was in between and the cat was like right on the corner and it's still a little scared of bear so it wouldn't just like walk out in it wouldn't just like walk out so instead it knew bear was there so it would like peek around the corner to see if bear was still there and it waited till bear left and then and then it came out and started doing it so it's so <laughs> it's so interesting to see the differences between uh between cats and dogs the poll is super close we're more than halfway through it is mom up by four votes so if you haven't voted yet get your vote in at the top of the chat a reminder that our sponsor tonight is card kingdom if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mgd goldfish if you get a free goldfish sticker just let him know you want one in your order notes and they will hook you up uh 
how do we get pics of Cece or you bring her on cam? I would be a fan of that. Oh, I put some pics on Twitter and she did come on uh, on cam at some point. Most likely on cam would be would be uh, it's so it should be at the top of the chat like if you have the chat by at least that's where it is for me am i am i pointing people in the right direction for me the poll is right above the the chat box although mom is mom is pulling away mom is pulling away at this point up by nine votes uh excited for some games either way i mean me too i'm also i am hyped to play some otter tonight otherwise merch page tokens t-shirts playmate giveaway support the dream and the channel and the site donations always appreciated never required two dollars more get your message right on stream hey seth I've hit a rough patch looking to sell a good portion of my cards. I have 3k cards that are worth over 5k. Is card kind of a good way to sell them? Um, it is a very easy way to sell them, holy law. So it really depends on on how much work you want to put into it. Darkwing Duck, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So basically, the the service that, and it looks like wow, oh my goodness one vote difference mom takes it down by a single vote which means i guess we're mama monica honey. so what um <clears throat> so what card so what card conduit does is they sell to vendors so it's essentially selling to buy list and they do the uh, your vote was did you not get in your vote one cube so it's technically technically tied <laughs> so technically the vote is okay okay does that mean we got to do another poll what do we do for a run? Okay, so here we go. Technically, when cube couldn't vote, which I guess means technically it's tied. One more, one more try. When cube, hopefully you can figure out how to vote this time. One more time, mom or enduring renewal. This time it's gonna be one, wow, two minutes. Two minutes. It's gonna be a super short poll. Another poll is up. Another poll is up. It's at the. I will show you where it is. Hopefully, I don't know if it's different. Uh, I don't know if it's different on uh, on on mobile. But if you go to the Twitch page where I see the poll is right here so uh, this is the chat box uh if you see here there's a poll that you can click on and you can vote on although uh wow this one is looking the boy why is it always so close when we do polls why is nothing why is nothing easy <laughs> we never just have like it be super super one direction it is always the closest the closest thing imaginable <laughs> So this mom is still pulling ahead though. It's super close, but mom's pulling ahead. So that's how you vote. Um, what were you we talking about? We were talking about something. Um, oh, oh, card, card conduit. So card conduit. Here's the upside of card conduit. They do all the work for you. You can take your five thousand dollars of cards. You can send them all to card conduit without doing anything. They'll take. 5%, I think it is something like that, like a, a low percentage and they will sell the cards for you and you will get the rest of the money. Uh, will you make more money if you try to sell each card individually on like eBay or TCD player? Probably, but it's also going to be a lot of work. So if you just want to be like, I don't want to deal with this. Like I don't have the time or the desire to try to like sell or trade all these cards, sending them to card conduit, paying 5% or 2% or whatever it is, depending on the service that you chose. I think it's pretty worth it because it's very time consuming to actually buy list all your cards. Uh, but that's basically the, the process of it. So the fact that you usually remember what you were talking about at first Angie is amazing. I just get lucky. I actually have like no memory. So, hey, good to see you, Tamania. Wow, it looks like mom's going to win. Last last seconds to get your vote in if you haven't already. Right now, mom is winning. It looks like mom is just slightly favored. So, I mean, how can you say no to a panharmonica? And I can't blame you for voting for mom. Gianna Lidge, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you. So 50, oh, my God, it's 50. 50. Oh, come on, people. <laughs> It's 50 50. Ah, Y'all are so bad at the. Oh my goodness, democracy. See, this is this is the problem with democracy. People get to have people get to have their choice, but ties are possible. <laughs> Spider, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't get to. Okay. All right, this is the last. Okay, we're doing one more poll. We're doing one more poll. This poll's for one minute. One minute. The shortest possible poll. <sighs> okay, last time. Mom, enduring renewal. All right, people. 
Vote wisely. Vote wisely. Here we go. In three, two, one, the new poll is up. Get your votes in. This has become very challenging. The poll's up. Mom's ahead by one. Mom's ahead by six. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. If this time it ties, I'm flipping a coin. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to roll a d20. I'm going to flip a coin. <laughs> Does my dog get a vote? I only one vote per household, I think. <laughs> Unless you have multiple multiple computers watching. The poll is at the top of the of the chat. Um if you go to the top of where the chat is, I don't know. Some people said they had a hard time finding it. I'll, I guess I'll pull this up over here again. Uh so the chat is here. The poll is the poll is right here at the top of the chat. Uh, it says last time up here. So if you click on that, you should be able to vote. Mom, oh, more votes this time. Mom is pulling ahead. Mom might pull it off. We might actually pan our monocon, but Indoor Renewal is coming back. Only four votes down. Only two votes. Oh, is this gonna tie? Oh my god, and Indoor Renewal is pulled ahead. <gasps> Where's the mom fans? Where's the mom fans? 58 to 56. Oh my goodness. So, oh my goodness, Enduring Renewal had by three votes. The time is running out. Get your votes in now. Oh, an Enduring Renewal. It pulled ahead. It pulled ahead. Oh, someone's going to be upset no matter what we play. Someone's, someone's going to be upset no matter what we do. <laughs> well, we beat mom. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, I, was the election rigged? That's a that is a good question. I don't think you can rig a Twitch election. I'm pretty sure. I hope you can't. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess the people have spoken. I guess the people have spoken, and we are we are playing in Duer Agree Duel. And the one more poll, one more poll. <laughs> All right, so how does this deck work? We can talk about other stuff as we go along. So, I mean, we'll play Mom in the future, so don't worry. If you're a Mom fan, we're going to get to it. I love Ella Jorn more than just about anything. Mom won the first poll by two votes, but I'm happy with whatever we play. So the problem with the first poll is apparently we had some disenfranchised voters who waited in line but, like, couldn't get in the door for some reason, and the Supreme Court, you know, overturned it. I don't know. Like, they're, they're, apparently it didn't count for some reason, but... <laughs> Here we, here we are, here we are. So what is Enduring Renewal combo trying to do? It's built around this janky old enchantment, Enduring Renewal. Four mana enchantment, you play with your hand revealed. <laughs> Bit of a drawback. If you would draw a card, instead you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, you gotta mail it, otherwise you draw a card, so you can't draw creatures. However, the big upside of this card, whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return it to your hand. So our combo is this, play Enduring Renewal, which we can find with Moon Bless Cleric, and then we we hope we have stone coil serpent or walking ballista we can cast them for zero mana they're gonna die they go to the graveyard we get it back with enduring renewal so we can do this an infinite number of times the last piece of the puzzle is alter of the brood when a permanent enters the battlefield under your control each opponent mills a card and the glue that holds all this together Urza Saga, one of the most busted, busted Saga lands in all of modern. Uh, this finds our Altar of the Brood. This can also find, well, I guess not our Stone Coil Serpents and Walking Ballista, right? There's got to be exactly zero or one. So it mostly finds our Altar of the Brood, but this helps us find that consistently. Moon Bless Kirk finds our Enduring Renewal. Ranger Captain Eos finds our Stone Coil Serpent or our Walking Ballista. So even though we need three combo pieces, we have a ton of redundancy. So... Oh, let's, uh, let's, we just finished a three and a half hour commander clash, almost three and a half hours. Oh, I went right from, I had to fill in for a <laughs> commander clash this week because Tomer and Krim were gone. So I filled in for commander clash. We started at one Eastern, went like three and a half hours, right, right into the, I went and grabbed bear real quick and right, uh, right into the stream. So it is a magic -y afternoon. Good thing magic is pretty awesome. Have you seen the legacy combo deck using Phyrexian Dead Knight with Mycosynth Gardens? I haven't, but that sounds really sweet. I like the idea of it. Mobo's weird today. You literally just chose the, uh, the app and reopen. The poll wouldn't populate with the app open. It never does, so that's strange. Huh, that is, that is very strange. <clears throat> yeah, it was... It was a it was an interesting themed week. It was career week, so you had to build. It was like a flavor week, so you had to build a deck around a non magic job. <laughs> so you could be like a cook, or you could be like uh, whatever. Like choose choose a career and build a deck around it. So it was an interesting theme. Doctor Sandor, how are you today? Good to see you. We have a new donation from. One cube, two dollar donation. Most I've laughed in a while. Thanks for the democracy stream. But one cube. Hopefully things are going well. I think. Didn't you say a little while ago, a couple of streams ago, that it had been a rough couple of days? So hopefully, hopefully things are going well with you. I'm glad we could do some uh, some laughing, <laughs> laughing at democracy. 
Uh, is this Gabnesy with the beard? Yes. <clears throat> I am yellow hat. <laughs> I don't know. Gab does a good impression of me. I don't know. I don't know how to do a Gab impression though. What is what does Gab say that's iconic? I'm trying to think. Like how how would I do a Gab impression? Maybe he's not. Uh, maybe he's not as impressionable. Or maybe everyone just likes doing impressions of me. That's also possible. The last time you streamed, I told you about a gruel deck I had, a bit of success with me, some edits. Thanks to the chat. And now I'm gold one for the first time. Hey, congratulations, chicken guy. That is that is super awesome. Congrats. Just gotta play really slow. <laughs> and and not and not recognize. Play really slow. Top deck cruel ultimatums. Don't keep an eye out for Dryad Arbors and your gab. <laughs> <laughs> there we go Dogamith handing out some gift subs to Lord Boys in Oxbow in Newgrass in Voldaris and Eibolt welcome y'all to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super chat for you thank you thank you thank you thank you you just gotta be Daria then pull up some amazing pasta to cheer from a rabid fan base oh so question oh boy we are not keeping this so question French came up and this came up earlier, and I, I wanted your opinion on it. So, we, food. We always have good food topics. Hey, what's up, green dude? How are you? Would you... <clears throat> well, this hand has the altar of the brood. Can find the zero drop. I mean, I think we keep it. It's not like a great hand, but it's fine. Um, <clears throat> have you ever eaten a snail? Would you eat a snail? That's a French thing, right? Isn't that, isn't that a, a French delicacy? Would... Is it actually good? If you have eaten a snail, I've never, I've never eaten a snail. I never want to eat a snail. Escar, escargot, yes, that's, they're actually delicious. Really? Interesting. I don't think, I don't think I would do it. They're, are they cooked? Or is it just like fresh off the, the slime? <laughs> Butter, I mean, I do like butter and garlic. Those are two, those are two good flavors. But see, if I wanted butter and garlic, I could eat something that was not a snail and get the flavor of butter and garlic. <laughs> I don't have to eat a snail to get that flavor. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Well, here, we got the altar of the brood. Off to the races. Okay, so the other, <clears throat> the other thing that came up. So it started actually with, with deer. I don't like seed food at all either. Have you ever eaten venison, like deer meat? I don't know if that's a common thing or if that's like a, a a rural thing that happens in upstate New York and other rural places because there's lots of deer and people like hunt them and then eat them. I really, I really don't like, I, I, I don't like venison either. It's like kind of gamey. I haven't had venison, but my rural family has. Yeah, I assumed it was kind of a like, <clears throat> you live in the middle of nowhere thing and people eat venison. There was, <laughs> there was this guy, I kid you not, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, there was this guy who lived, um, <laughs> who lived, who lived a couple blocks away. He would, he would literally try to hit deer with his car so he could eat them. <laughs> like, which to me is just like the most, like the most redneck, ridiculous thing that I can think of. <laughs> but he would actually intentionally try to like hit deer, <laughs> which is, which is not good for your car. I have accidentally hit deer. Deer will mess up your car. You do not want to hit a deer. Ego, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what about? So deer, okay, deer, some people like deer, some people don't. We talked about snails. The other one that came up, <laughs> insurance company, I'm sure they do. It probably, it, don't do that. Like, I would never do that. I think it, there's probably a good chance that it is illegal. Um, oh, Mills, a deer will kill your car. I definitely know. Like, the thing is, there's a lot of deer around here. So it's, uh, most people will accidentally hit a deer at some point because they'll just run in right in front of you and there's nothing you can do about it. I know several people who have had their cars quite literally totaled. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have played this Ultra the Brood. This is going to mill our opponent into Murktide, isn't it? Huh. Maybe we should have held on to it until we were ready to combo. Oh, we mill a Prismatic ending. Ingenious Smith. Go digging. We still need the renewal. That's the biggest thing we're missing. Mill you. Oh, oh my God. It's a breach deck. Oh, no. 
Oh no, we are helping our opponent. Take a walking ballista. Oh, this is this is bad news. This is bad, bad news. What about um <clears throat> kangaroo is good? Is that a thing you can can you eat kangaroo? Is that allowed? I've been playing the Gone Cold Blooded for Commander for a while. It's one of the most fun I've ever had in a journal format. Is that on Magic Online? <clears throat> I believe that the Walking Dead cards are on Magic Online. I've never played them, but I've I've seen them, so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Wait, you really eat a kangaroo? That can't be. My family has hit a record on coyotes. My mom had one removed from the, her car's grill. Ragavad dashes it. Well, I mean, we will block here. Actually, Ranger Captain's kind of a good way to stop breach combo, right? If we have a Ranger Captain sending out, our opponent shouldn't be able to do much. Oh, block. Kill the stupid monkey. Untap. Where's our Enduring Renewal? We need a land and an Enduring Renewal. Another smith. Well, silent clearing, mill you. Hmm. Ingenious Smith, mill you, go digging, take a stone coil, play. We're all, we're all in. We're all in on the mill. We're going to do this the fair way. Mill you, grow the Smith, pass the turn, double altar of the brood. What about um frog legs? Would you eat frog legs? Have you eaten frog legs? That came up too, and I I the idea of eating frog legs sounds really gross to me, but other people said they're really good. I don't think I would I mean I guess that's probably like a regional or cultural thing, eating kangaroo. Probably if you're from upstate New York, you've never had the never had the option to eat a kangaroo. Pond chicken? Are they actually good? They taste like chicken? It just sounds gross. Like the this it just sounds disgusting to me for some reason. I don't know why. More Smiths. Well. One, two, three. How close are we to dying? Let's let's play the Ranger Captain. Trigger, trigger, mill you, mill you. Another breach down. Two breaches down. Grab a walking ballista. Hit you with the smith. Opponent's down to 37 cards. We're kind of doing it. On the topic of weird food, what is everyone's opinion on Kasu Marazu? I don't even know what that is. Seth, have you got any good 90s folk music wrecks? Ah, boy. Was there any good folk music in the 90s? I'm trying to think of like, I don't associate 90s with folk. Uh, past the turn. Yeah, I guess, I guess aeroplanes, aeroplanes pretty folky. It's indie, but it's like folky indie. Yeah, we've definitely turned on the unholy heat. Elliot Smith, okay, Elliot Smith, that's, I guess there's uh, there's a fine line between like some of the indie stuff and folk stuff, but if Elliot Elliot Smith is has some very good songs. Do you know the artist Annie DeFranco? <laughs> uh I know the name. I've never it was like I feel like Annie DeFranco was like my aunt's favorite musician or something. So I've like heard of Annie DeFranco, but I don't think I've ever actually listened to Annie DeFranco. Back has a, Back's 90 stuff was not as folky, but Back has definitely went through some folky phases. Kazamarazu is a traditional Ceridian sheep milk cheese that contains live insect larvae. Wait, no. Seriously? People, people eat? That sounds like some fear factor, <laughs> some fear factor stuff going on. Uh, I, I, I do not think I would eat live insects. Yeah, that sounds very disgusting. Affinity to Squirtle. Hey, Zach, thanks for, uh, Seth, thanks for amazing content. Being such a positive member of the MTD community, you rock all Affinity. Thank you for the kind words and all the subs. Big scoop shit for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely would. It's really good. Wait, no, the maggot cheese is really good? What about, uh, 
<laughs> what about Rocky Rocky Mountain oysters? <laughs> that's a that's a Colorado thing. I learned about those in Colorado. Almost got tricked into eating one in Colorado, but I figured it out just in time. Would I ever eat boltu? I don't know what boltu is. Fertilized chicken. Oh boy, we're. <laughs> I I I have a hard time mixing two foods together. I don't put milk on my cereal. I'm not gonna eat a fertilized chicken fetus. <laughs> that's like that's like so far down the list of things I would ever eat. <laughs> it's it's a stretch for me to put mustard on my burger. Like that's that's adventurous. Um, Darcy will sit it out. Mill you, mill you. Let's hit another underworld breach or two. If we can mill all the breaches, we might be able to win accidentally by getting rid of all the finishers there goes a ledger shredder and a mishra's bobble well play another smith i feel like we're about to die opponent has a spell snare now um well we will play a walking ballista X1, mill you, mill you. Oh, no breaches. Oh, no. I mean, if our opponent has breach here, we lose, right? We just milled our opponent into their win. We will pass the turn of it on depths. Any cat update? Just got here and I must know. The cat is the cat is back around. It disappeared for a day, but apparently it was just hiding uh, because it came back. All right, bolts. Well, apparently we're not dying this turn. If we ever draw and resolve Enduring Renewal, we just win. Like, we have the combo set up. Uh, the cat's doing really well. We're playing Enduring Renewal combo right now. Although, oh, I probably got to change the stream title, don't I? I think I... We had a vote. <clears throat> we're a democracy around here. We had a vote. The vote, the vote said that we were... <laughs> we're going to play Enduring Renewal combo and the people the people win you must go with the people i will update the i will update the stream title because it was still mom doing my first draft in years saturday with all will be one what is the best thing to focus on to win all will be one is super aggressive um it is very, very aggro. You want to focus on taking two drops. You want to focus on attacking. You do not want to focus on, on blocking. Yeah, CC is for Couch Cat because, because of the way I got the cat, which is it snuck in and lived in my couch for several days until it started pooping on the floor. <laughs> and then I realized that there was a cat living in my house. Uh, all right, Milu Milu. Show us an Underworld Breach. Oh! Oh, that's three. How many breaches do they play? Do they play four breaches? Oh, could we actually do this? Is it actually possible? That's that's four. That's three three breaches down. Yeah, CC for Couch Cat. Uh, it came in through the dog door. <clears throat> I, well, I'm like 99% sure it came in through the dog door. Well, hit you with the ballista. Now what? How do we mill that last breach? Um, Ballista X2? Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Come on. Oh, no, they're going to counter it. Okay, considers. Come on. Come on, if we can mill this breach, if we can mill this breach, we pulled off the least likely win ever. <clears throat> I, I think if I spelled it out, it would be like C-E-E-C-E-E. -E -C -E -E. But it's it's C C for Couch Cat. I mean, I guess I guess I hadn't really thought it through fully. Come on, come on, come on. Scalding Tarn. Lightning bolt. Alright. No breach, no breach, no breach. Opponent, unholy heat. Ping you, ping you. Our opponent's graveyard is ridiculously full. About it. 
Okay, Ragavan. Well, that doesn't beat us. Actually, you know what? Let's just ping it. <laughs> I think that's fine. Like, we're not planning on winning with damage. We're planning on winning with mill. Hollowed Fountain. Untap down to seven. To fairy. And, wow, they're going to bounce it. Bounces Alter the Brood. That's good for us, though, right? Because then we get to replay it and get another trigger. Oh, man. We might actually just mill them out fairly. That is so unlikely. Kira Ashmore, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Breach, 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 breach. Uh, silent clearing. Breach, 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 breach. Ah! Number four! Number four! We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we did it. Um, all right, pass the turn. Can our opponent beat us without any underworld reaches? <laughs> oh, about it. Ledger Shredder. 18 cards in the deck. Ticks up to Fairy. And gets Jingatha, the desperation Jingatha. Steam vets. Tapped. Well, I mean, we're gonna sack this silent clearing. Draw a card. This is not how you're supposed to win with this deck. You are not supposed to fairly mill your opponent out one card at a time. Brood, Milia, Milia. Ranger Captain of Eos. Milia, Milia. Tutor. Up a Walking Ballista. And pass the turn. 14 cards in the deck. <laughs> hey, what's up, Lucid? How are you? About it. To Vary. Takes it up. They can't win, right? How are they going to win? How are they going to win without Underworld Breach? About is called a Tarn. Would you play the modern Mono Black Burn deck that was in the League Dump? Uh, yes. There's a good chance we uh, we see that one in the future. The person who 5 would with that actually <laughs> sent me uh, sent me an email about it. So there's a good chance that that one might be coming up on the on the YouTube's in the not too distant future. My path to metal deck went three two last week, but I got a little unlucky in the second round. Probably should have been four and one. I'm glad it's working, uh, Mother Frogger. Wait, is Ledger Shredder a May? No, it is not. Oh, opponents, opponents doing themselves in. They have to loot here. They have to loot. They're going to die to Ledger Shredders. <laughs> Opponent. When was the last time someone played Lantern Control and Modern? We played it a few months ago. Every time we play it, it's good. Even when it's supposed to be bad and the meta is supposed to be hostile, every time we play it, it ends up, it ends up doing really well. I think we went 4-1. and one. I still think Lantern's good. 10 cards in the deck. Opponent. In full-on desperation mode, we can mill what? One, two, three, four. We mill eight. We need one more, one more permanent. <laughs> one more permanent coming into play, and I think we win this turn. A bonus. Passes. We draw. Oh, that doesn't quite do it. So, snow-covered planes. Milia, milia. Stone Coil. We're going to give up on the combo. Stone Coil Serpent. Milia Milia. Walking Ballista. Connivia Milia. So opponent has to kill us this turn? And they can't cast two spells or they die to Ledger Shredder. <laughs> What a weird, weird way for this game to go. Pass the turn. You're going to vote it. Do your best. <laughs> yeah, they can't cast two spells or they, they die to connive. Decks like Lantern are basically always good because Colorless has answers for potentially any meta issue. The issue is it's a high skill deck, so it won't ever run rampant in the format. I think that's, that's partly true. Although part of it, too, is... Stuff like Besaju makes it worse. So there's like, they, we keep getting more and more answers. Prismatic ending is really good against it. Besaju is really good against it. Opponent, combat, one card in the deck. Attacks with everything. Well, block, block. 
and snipe opponent hits us to 12 and passes <laughs> playing land million million pass the turn <laughs> How did this work? How did this work? Uh, Magic Online is PC only. Magic Arena, where you can play... Oh, no. Oh, no. Who who built this deck? Permanence? Oh, I guess Soulless Jailer works. I was going to say, where's the where's the graveyard hate? Where is the graveyard hate? But we got a little bit. We got a little graveyard hate. Um, Mono Wait Mill. OP. <laughs> There is Magic Arena, which you can't play all the same formats that we are playing, but a Johnny's Welcome is weird. I wonder why there isn't a Johnny's Welcome in the main deck of this deck. You can't play all the same formats. However, it is a, it is a app that you can play on your phone, which is nice. Actually, the person that finished second at the last Pro Tour did it on their phone. Is there a good guide anywhere to the limits of free-to-play in Moto? <sighs> what are you looking for in specific, Mormon Freeman? I know I've done a couple of pieces of content about free-to-play playing Magic Online, but they weren't... I don't know if it was a guide to... Well, kind of. I would look on the YouTube, uh, see if see if the videos I made about free-playing Magic Online are, are what you're looking for. Arm Fingers 3K, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank ya. Um, yes, you're always gonna have to. You're always gonna have to pay. Hmm. You're always gonna have to pay. Um, pay five dollars. You can play. You can play some things and test out the client for free, but if you, oh, we actually have the full combo, but if you actually want to want to trade cards, which you need to be able to uh, build the decks that you want, there is a $5 fee. They're supposed to be getting rid of it. They haven't actually gotten rid of it yet, but um, as far as I, as far as I'm aware, it's been a minute since I've created an account. Uh, as far as I know, though, they haven't gotten rid of it yet. But, uh, but yes, outside of that, you can free to play. The, the card rental programs are the key. Uh oh. The card rental programs are the key way to free to play. Cause both of the two big card, uh, card rental programs or loan programs, uh, will let you borrow a certain dollar of value of cards for free without any money at all. Uh, so you can build actually a pretty a pretty huge amount of decks just using the free card rental programs. So that's kind of the key way to be able to play like modern and uh, oh, we got to run out alter modern and uh, pioneer and formats like that without spending any money. Can you still trade full collection for physical cards? For recent standard sets, yes. The I believe it's the I believe it's the two most recent standard sets right now that you can if you have a complete set, you can trade them in for paper cards. How does card rentals work on Moto? So so far, they haven't done it internally. There's two external one is card hoarder, which is the one I use. The other one is mana traders, which I know other people who use. Essentially it's like a subscription service where you pay so much you pay so much on a on a monthly basis and well yeah i guess we are a saga you pay so much on a much on like a weekly or monthly basis and you get, just get to use all the cards oh yeah you all moto cards have real value like i'm pretty sure that i put a lot of money into moto over the years but i'm pretty sure that i could sell the collection and probably break even over uh, after everything that I put into it. Yeah, I usually I usually vouch for a card hoarder just because I am personally familiar with them. But I know other people like mana traders, though. So. What are your thoughts on the Penny Dreadful format? I think the idea of Penny Dreadful is really cool. I think the... Hmm... Yeah, let's just get rid of the Ledger Shredder. 
I think the idea of Penny Dreadful is super cool. The challenge I run into with Penny Dreadful is it's not fully supported. So there's, <clears throat> there's a bunch of... There's a bunch of hoops you gotta jump through to actually play it. Like, you can't just get on magic online and jump into a penny dreadful league or anything like that you gotta like find someone to play with through uh, somehow so that's kind of the thing that keeps me from playing it more if it was if it was more supported it would be a lot easier to play we need walking ballista for a combo like if our opponent taps out here we actually we actually just get to win with our combo next turn ledger shredder the question is <clears throat> do we go for it if our opponent doesn't tap out that's the that's the issue uh, opponent uh, passes well float a mana get a uh, alter the brood oh do we go for it are they gonna have are they gonna have a counter are we gonna get countered <clears throat> well players you know Mill you. Our opponent leaving the man up is suspicious. The other problem is if we go for the combo and our opponent answers it, then we're in trouble because we can't play creatures anymore. <clears throat> cleric would be safer. The problem with cleric is we don't have enough lands next turn. Yeah, I think we actually have to go for it. Yeah, enduring renewal. If we play Cleric and put a... All right, opponent does have the counter. Well, all right. Next turn, we can Cleric. We need to draw land, though. We need four mana for Enduring Renewal, which is an issue. Spell Pierce is kind of the blowout there, but I eh, can't really do anything about it. If you come to Minneapolis, you could also coordinate with Mitch from Command Quarter for some sweet collaboration on budget Commander decks. Ooh, that could be sweet. About it. Getting in with the Ledger Shredder. Well, drawing a land would be super sweet. What if he stream sniping? Uh, the opponent stream sniping. It's possible. I don't know. Some people get really salty about streams. Oh, that is absolutely ridiculously brutal. Ridiculously brutal. Uh, so well. Oh. Opponent, 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 opponent. Um, Urza Saga. Mill you. Yeah, our opponent might have enough defenses here. The getting back double ledger shredder is real bad for us. Moon bless cleric. So much interaction. I feel like the combo's at its best against decks that are not super interaction heavy. And our opponent seems to be pretty pretty controlly. Oh, Moon bless cleric. I had not thought through that this can just tutor up Urza Sagas. Wait, should we just be trying to go all in on Urza Saga? Maybe that's better. Hmm. Hmm. Moonbusker getting Urza Saga is something I totally didn't think about. Next turn, one, two, play this. Next turn, one, two. We can make some big constructs. Yeah, I think we take a Saga for now. Pass the turn. Opponent, I assume, is going to engineer explosives away our board and get another Ledger Shredder, which is bad. The Tony Mac, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. About it blows everything up with engineered explosives. Um, There might be a pithy needle in the sideboard, maybe. I don't, there's definitely not one in the main deck. Opponent gonna do some conniving with their double ledger shredder. This time we don't like seeing our opponent conniving. Opponent discards a land. Opponent discards another land. Opponent gets in with two ledger shredders. Not looking good, not looking good. Opponent cracks a bobble, draws a card. We draw the saga. Well, portable hole. 
try to get rid of a ledger shredder. Urza Saga. Oh, do we try to set up the combo again instead of going for Sagas? Do we actually win by making constructs? It would be a 2 2. It's not that big. All right. Moonblast Cleric again. Opponent gets to connive because Ledger Shredder is pretty good. Couldn't we have cast Enduring Ideal when the altar with Urza. Couldn't we have gotten Enduring Renewal? Then a new altar with Urza. Urza and been good to go. Uh, I mean, the challenge in all this is actually being able to resolve, resolve our combo pieces through our opponent's disruption. Like we had an enduring renewal, but it got countered. So we could have, we could have tried to tutor it up and just run it into another counter. The nice thing about Urza Saga is it's not as counterable. So we have reassembled the combo. Whether or not we can resolve it through our opponent's pile of counters is another question altogether. Opponent gets and hits us. Now we might actually wait. So we draw Enduring Renewal. Make a Construct. Get a uh, oh the tough choices. Hmm. <clears throat> so we can get a spring leaf drum and make another construct and just try to go aggro. I guess that's got to be the choice here because we can get a yeah we can get an alter to the blue uh, brood next turn. So spring leaf drum. I guess we're I guess we're artifact B down here. Chris Funk, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Get in with the moon blast cleric. If our opponent actually taps out for Jingatha, then then we are free to combo off and win. Opponent. Cracks is called being turned down to 50. I mean, we're kind of close to winning with combat damage. How bad is a underworld breach? Annoying. Expressive iteration. This is how I beat Blue Eye with Amulet Titan. <laughs> Urza Saga is very good against control decks. Like, not being able to be countered is a huge, huge deal. Uh, opponent doing some digging. And. Opponent plays a land. Wow, going to keep on attacking. Opponent has zero fear. Three cards in hand. One is a Jagatha. Lightning Bolt is exiled. Opponent. Going to bolt our face and connive. Well, okay. Make a construct. Opponent draws in discards. And... Could we be running Hall of Heliad's Generosity with the current mana base in case our opponent destroys Endure Renewal? It can also put Urza Saga on top of the deck if we need it. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. Hey, Jerry Magello, you're amazing. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> I mean, make a construct. Saga triggers. Get a. I guess we're just giving up on the combo and just playing like a Urza Saga deck. Soul Guide Lantern. Get rid of Lightning Bolt. And then. Uh, 
unlicensed hers. Go to combat, swing, opponent needs removal. Opponent, do you have an answer? Oh. Oh, jeez. Wow. Well, I guess maybe we should have went for the combo? Now I don't even know. Mm. This deck is a new true win. Control deck with an instant win combo. I can see that comparison. Although, they should just unban twin. The twin thing's so ridiculous. Well, Dress Town was... That opponent, two mana draw a card, blow up 20 power of constructs. <laughs> oh, I mean, we're nowhere near... Really? We're nowhere near comboing now. We are not even a little bit close to comboing. And opponent, Castle Lightning Bolt Connives. We don't have any... We don't have a Ultra of the Brood or a way to get one. Yeah, I think we're just dead. Oh, these Ledger Shredders have gone off for our... Really? We had it. It was the counter. The counter was a problem. And we're actually running out of... Running out of time as well. Like, this is bad in a whole bunch of ways. Pona hits us. Down to six. We draw land. We have a single Ultra of the Brood left in our deck. Yeah, there's no... Oh, we're done. Our opponent got us. They just, they did it. Well, land on thin ice is sort of an answer, maybe. On thin ice. Get rid of the ledger shredder. All right, I guess we're not fully dead yet. Oh, I will say our opponents had to have like several huge answers to be able to stay in this game. Like they needed engineered explosives and to wrath our board and they needed the counter spell to not just die to the combo turns ago. Hey, what's up, Terry? How are you? Any balance decks? Who I haven't played a balance deck in a while. I do, I do enjoy restore balance though. Well, keep eating the graveyard very slowly. So we can't play Enduring Renewal until we find Ultra the Brood. Dark Steel Citadel. Well, I mean, I guess we... I think we've just fully given up on the combo at this point. Actually, I don't even think we play that yet. Dark Steel Citadel, go. The other problem is we got five minutes on our clock, so we got to win. Not only do we have to not die, but we got to do this pretty quick because it's only game two. About it. Oh, that dress down. That was a pretty impressive dress down. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Fair enough. We're gonna go to. We're gonna go to game three. Whoo. Okay. So every counter, engineered explosives. Where? Wow. Pony has a lot of. They have a lot of things that can answer this. Many, many, many things. Um. Huh. So. How do we possibly? So I guess we need like a ranger captain of Eos. I guess. All right, run it like that. Stepped away to play a historic brawl game. I'm on the play with Urza versus Velomachus. They ramp land destruction turn two and three. Wait. Oh, they ramped on turn one into land destruction turn two and three. How much land destruction is there even available in historic brawl? There can't be much. I mean, cards that cycle are powerful. So the fact. I don't think Sanctifier does much, does it? I mean, I guess it dodges removal if it resolves. We know they got Spell Snare, though. About it, about it, about it. <sighs> arena players, I don't think, could handle... <laughs> I don't think arena players could handle... Uh, could handle playing against Armageddon. I think you would see you would see so many angry posts, so many angry tweets. Oh, 
All right. Well, I mean, we have the combo once again. Can we get it through our opponent's interaction? That is the challenge. Can we draw mana? I We do have a lot of disruption, sort of. Now, well, Soul Guide Lantern, go. A bonus. I mean, I would I would enjoy getting people with Armageddon, making, making people quit Arena forever. <laughs> but I don't think there's any way they do it. Bonus, Mishra's Bobble. A bonus, Cracks, Mishra's Bobble. Ooh, how mad do people get when you Armageddon in EDH? I assume the answer is extremely. Mocking Ballista. Oh, playing this saga is so bad here. It's so, so bad. Oh, are we sacking this to draw a card? Yeah, I think that's all we can do. All right, we hit a planes. Wow, what a what a sad start. Pass the turn. About it. Untaps. Yeah, I'm excited for Snapcaster coming to Arena. I also saw, I think today, they announced Huntmaster of the Fells. Huntmaster of the Fells. Oh, I love that card. Huntmaster is just like, I don't even know if it's good anymore. Like, probably not. But it's just like such a sweet value card. Out of like the early like 2010s cards, I think Huntmaster is one of the more iconic cards. Ledger. Shredder. And Mishra's Bobble. Opponent's gonna start the conniving. Yep, yep, yep. Mills up discards a bobble, plays a bobble, cracks a bobble, draws a card, blah blah blah. Well, we've gotten through almost all the bobbles. That's sort of a win. Opponent, bobbles. Oh, and they have dress down. Ugh. Well, Urza Saga. Trigger. Um, portable hole. Get rid of the ledger shredder. Soulless jailer. Pass the turn. There's a chance that we can win in two turns. So if we can Ranger Captain Vios next turn and resolve it, we got a we got a shot. We got a shot. Expressive iteration. So Ranger Captain, if it lives until our turn. Oh, can't cast nine creature spells from graveyard or exile. So it's actually sort of hates on expressive iteration a little bit. We got a chance. We got a chance of seeing the combo. We got a chance of seeing the combo. Thank you for running Doom Foretold, Grinding Enchantment Deck, and Pioneer. Do you think, uh, do you have any idea if it has mirror in the current meta? <sighs> Can you build it in a way that you have a chance against Mono Green Devotion? That would be my concern. I like the Grindy Enchantment plan. I just don't know how it... Monogram Devotion puts an end to a lot of fun ideas. <laughs> so that would be that would be my worry. Like, can you actually beat Monogreen Devotion on occasion? Because Monogreen is just so explosive that if you're trying to grind, it can give you a, a tough time. Speaking of MTG Salt, I just built a Legacy Pox deck in paper. So nice that a good, uh, and it's nice what a good sport friendly person everyone at my LGS is compared to Commander where everyone's doing degenerate stuff. Interesting. The Legacy community is a super friendly community. I can, I can uh, vouch for that. Legacy players are super friendly. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, we got to go for it. We got to go for it. Ranger Captain of Eos. We need this to live until our turn, basically. Yes. Get a Stone Coil Serpent past the turn. Hold, hold, hold. Hold, no lightning bolts, no lightning bolts. Oh my God, we got a shot, we got a shot, we got a shot. The ranger captain on our turn stops all the interaction and lets us go off. The problem is our opponent, oh no. I bet our opponent's gonna not scoop and we're gonna time out. Oh, we gotta play this super fast, okay. Okay, we're gonna have to play this fast because we might have to cast the stone coil like a ridiculous number of times. I 
I mean, even if it dies, we can try to go for it, but then we're back in the same position where... Where there's things that ruin our day. Engineered explosives would be super annoying here. Opponent. Oh, is this explosives? It is. Ugh. Oh, dear. Okay. Opponent is not making this easy. Well, we will make a construct. Tutor up a pithing needle on engineered explosives. Play a Jano. Relic a progenitus. Go to combat, hit you with a ranger. Are we back on the beatdown plan? Because now we, again, we don't have... We don't have the altar of the brood because we had to get the needle about it. Snow-covered mountain. I mean, we could draw the... Ledger Shredder. I mean, I guess we could draw it. That would be good. We do have Altar of the Broods in our deck. Unholy going after the Soulless Jailer. Opponent doesn't have enough card types though, right? Okay, so we will crack the Relic. Nuke the Graveyard. Fizzle the Removal. Opponent. Passes. Altar of the Brood. Altar of the Brood. Well, we will run out a Stone Coil Serpent. Hit you with the construct. Opponent. What a ridiculous game. Pass the turn. About it. Yeah, at this point, it seems more realistic to go on the beatdown plan, I think. Unlicensed Earth, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's our most realistic plan, is just to try to beat down now. About it. I'm gonna bolt the ranger captain of EOS. Well, we might as well sag it. M. Lawrence, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So ended up being a very long game. Opponent discards a breach. And passes. Two cards in hand. We untap. Unlicensed. Well, we will play on Licensters. Opponent. Cracks the Flooded Strand. Are they going to counter this? I mean, pony's down to nine. Pony's down to nine. Steam vents tapped. Well, go to combat. Hit you with the construct. Are we taking the beats? Are we taking the beats? Yeah, Hearse is annoying. But I think, like, we're so close to winning by beatdowns. Pass the turn. I think we're just going to win fairly. I think we got a shot of winning fairly. Opponent. Going to eat our Ranger Captain. That's fine. That's fine. Who oh, opponent adapts. I mean, they get a free block on the Stone Coil. 
And we can't really play the Ballista after we've played the Hearse, because maybe we shouldn't have played the Hearse. Maybe we should have played Ballista, because if we cast the Ballista, then they connive and grow the Ledger Shredder. Opponent. Passes. We untap. Enduring Renewal. Um, go to combat. Do some attacking. What do you got? Please not dress down. Please not dress down. Opponent blocks and dress down. Okay, where's... Oh no, can we actually close this? Is our opponent gonna have enough interaction to get out of this? And unholy heats, jeez. Okay, and opponent connives. Discards a spell pierce. And another, but opponent's out of cards. But opponent's out of cards. Opponent's out of cards, okay. Well, okay, so. A minute and 30 seconds. Ballista X2. Pass the turn. Opponent. Eats our graveyard. Oh, hold. What a, what an epic game to start our league. Wow! Oh, the literal best possible draw in their entire deck. Expressive iteration to C3 cards. Oh, wow. Wow. Seth made us think you can evolve with Mr. Beast Charity Controversy on Twitter. <laughs> oh, yeah, Twitter is an interesting world. <laughs> About it. Well, they're going to have something after they express a iteration. You always have something after you express a iteration. Opponent. Sacred Foundry Exile. Plays it. Tapped. One card in hand. What is it? Another expressive iterate. Wow, I think we got it. I think we should have it, right? This should be it. Oh, we did it. We did it the hard way. About it. Opponent. They could have killed the Shredder in Ballista. Exhale two cards. Yeah, our opponent also has a hearse. So they can kind of fizzle our hearse. So we've kind of been... But they've been attacking our graveyard. So we've kind of been leaving it up to... To be able to go after something when they do. I mean, we should be good, right? I don't know how they get out of this with one mana. We can ping, we can ping. They basically have to counter the Ballista. And even that, like, they need a counter, but they only have one mana. It would have to be a counter that they most likely don't have in their deck. Yes, that ended up being, like, the longest, most ridiculous possible match. Found it. Finally draws a guard. Where tear exiled. About it. Passing. Well, we untap. Play Silent Clearing. Play a Ballista X2. They need to have, like, Ceremonious Rejection, I think. An opponent bolts a Ballista. Ping you. Ping you. And we got the GG's. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I know I would have done it. And ping you. 
Opponent said though <laughs> blank those weird games. Indeed. That is not how this is supposed to go. That's not how this is supposed to go. We're supposed to just like, haha, we comboed off on turn four and gotcha. That's more of the idea. Not play <laughs> an hour-long grind fest that comes down to <laughs> Walking ballista, walking ballista figs. What a match, though. What a ridiculously epic match. Ah, I've been playing Moto a long time. Hopefully, I'm kind of, I'm kind of fast at it. So on the Mr. Beast thing, I'm actually curious what people think about it because I think it's kind of an interesting topic. My, my thinking was Mr. Beast makes videos that like are crushing Lamborghinis with whatever or like eating the world's largest pizza and gets like a hundred million views. And then sometimes he make videos that are, uh, that's a lot of sagas. Can we just saga to the win? We're on the play. We're not super close. Maybe we ship this. Turn one land, turn two saga, turn three saga. We make a bunch of constructs. Maybe that's enough. Hmm. Yeah, let's mulligan. Well, we're gonna keep this. This is this is fine. We got a saga. I guess we get rid of the odd and thin ice, probably. Uh it. But basically my <laughs> I don't know why it became such a big conversation, honestly, but my thinking is if you're gonna make a if you can make a video of crushing a car. Or you can make a video where you give some people shoes. To me, it seems like I would rather have you giving people shoes who need shoes. Like, everything else equal. <laughs> In my mind, that's just, like, strictly better. Because at least someone benefited from it. <laughs> so I, I, I'm i actually kind of, I don't know, sort of confused by, <laughs> by the entire thing. Because to me, it just seems so obvious. But... <laughs> it's more of a complaint that we need a youtube billionaire to do this stuff instead of the government i mean i agree with that honestly like it's the system obviously is horrible and it doesn't take care of people but i don't know at the end of the day if someone who didn't have shoes yesterday has shoes today I, to me that feels like a win but i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm missing something because that just seems like i uh, i'm actually just like surprised by it because it to me it just seems like so obvious i don't know like i didn't have shoes now i have shoes hooray i have shoes now because it sucks not to have shoes <laughs> I, so i actually was kind of taken aback by the like trying to understand what the controversy is because in my mind i just can't wrap my head around the the controversy all right ingenious oh wow the worst smith of all time four snow covered planes in a row Hey, what's up, uh, Chronic Crime? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Am I going to Magic Con Minneapolis? <sighs> that one's not currently on my schedule. So unlikely, I would say. I think it's uh, probably unlikely that I make it to uh, Minneapolis. I think we'll be in uh, in Vegas, most likely. So I think that'll be the next one. I'm trying. I gotta figure out like now if I'm gonna try to go to um, Command Fest uh, Richmond. So maybe Command Fest Richmond. So we'll we'll see. Uh, about it taking down the crashing footfalls how do we beat rhinos i guess with the combo so if we find a white source ranger captain can get hmm ranger captain can get a ballista we still need to find a white source and enduring renewal that's going to be the 
That's gonna be the hard part. Oh, double crashing footfall suspended. Okay. There are a lot of rhinos in our future. <laughs> oh, they're working on Civ 7? I didn't see that. I'm actually pretty hyped about that because I've started playing uh I've started playing Civ 6, and Civ 6 is actually really sweet. It took me it took me a while to adjust to like because so one of the ways I like to play Civ is is to just kind of like spam cool things like wonders and so forth and it took me a bit to oh i wish we could i wish we could play the ranger captain not hitting those planes might actually be an issue uh and it took me a while to get used to the fact that like oh my city can't just build every wonder i want to i have to actually like plan where i put things in my city and if i put this here then i can't build this but after i got used to it i actually think it's i used to think that five was better than six but now that i've started to like delve into how six works i actually really like it so i'd be super hyped for seven put me in minneapolis on your schedule i'll see what i could do dog maybe i can maybe i can make it maybe i can make it have you ever played deep rock galactic i don't even know what deep rock galactic is honestly uh, boom. It, taking down the footfalls. Taking down the footfalls. I'm super hyped for a shared as everything in Master. The bonus sheet's gonna... Oh, this is letting them put so many cool cards into the set. Like, it's really cool to see... It's really cool to see, uh... Huntmasters and Snapcasters. All these cards that... Ooh, haven't been around forever. Really sweet to see those actually making a return. Well, so if we play this one, two, I guess we can do them both now. I mean, I guess we're once again, we're going to try to make a bunch of constructs. <laughs> Apparently missing those planes. The four planes we put to the bottom with Smith is actually a problem. Look at how much, look at how much colorless mana we have. <laughs> Well, all right. We will pass. I don't think we want to make the construct. Hmm, the construct would grow the smith, right? Maybe it's worth it. It is an extra point of damage. Yeah, let's let's just do it. Make a construct, grow the smith. Plethora of moose. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ya. About it. Oh no, my goodness, that's so many rhinos. Oh, that's so many rhinos. That's too many rhinos. <laughs> oh, eight moths. I had a huge moth in my house the other day. Moths are actually kind of creepy. <laughs> uh. Do you think Shadows over Innistrad will have duplicate protection on Arena? I mean, the last remastered set did, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the last remastered set did. So I think it's likely that it will. I don't think it'll have any cross set duplicate protection. We've never seen that. So if there's a card that's already on Arena that they also put in the set, I think you're going to have a Shadows over Innistrad version and whatever the other version is. But as far as the set itself, I think uh, I think it should. Opponent rhinos us for a few million. Yup, 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 yup. Down to twelve. Oh, that's a lot of four fours. We untap. Trigger our sagas. Draw a ballista. Well, one, two. Make a construct. Grow the smith. Take up the saga. Get a spring leaf drum. Play the citadel. Pass the. We just gotta make more constructs than our opponent can make rhinos. Easy. <laughs> Easy. No problem. About it.
Maybe we should have attacked there. We could have got in for eight. I'm worried about Brazen Borrower or more instant speed rhinos. Uh, about it. Pump fakes. Do you think they would, uh, didn't they make it so you would open them until you had everything else as long as you had four of them? So, I, th they did do that with, like, Scrylands, I want to say. Did they do that with everything? <sighs> well, I guess I'm glad we didn't attack because that is even more rhinos. Jeez. Opponent has found all four. It's, wow, turn five, and they have all four crashing footfalls. If our opponent has a way to deal with a construct, we are pretty dead. We're really leaning hard on these constructs to save us, and I don't know if they can do it. About it. Untaps. Rhinos. Ugh. <sighs> That's a lot, so many 4-4s. Four Was crashing footfalls a good or bad thing for Modern, I wonder? I wonder, what do you think of, what do you think of footfalls? Positive or negative overall? Opponent, combat. I'm gonna go on the big attack. Well, we will... Make a construct... I feel like our house of cards might be about to crumble. Do you have interaction? Oh, they have the brazen borrower. Okay, ice to tap a construct. Well, block and block. Drop to four. Okay, down to four. Down to four. Not dead. Not dead yet. about it wait can we grow these can we lethal put a place of scalding tarn is there any way we can get lethal maybe we can uh opponent cracks down to 11 yeah trample does make it pretty good doesn't it shardless agent but nothing to cascade into okay Okay. Oh my goodness, I think we can do it. 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 Untap. Are we going to win? I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win it. Saga triggers. No construct. We're going for the win right now. Actually, no. Make a construct. So we can tap it for white mana. So construct. Grow the Smith. I guess our opponent could have Force of Negation blue card. That might get him out of it. Saga triggers. We will grab a Soul Guide Lantern. Get rid of whatever. And Portable Hole. Constructs. Better than Rhinos? Better than Rhinos. Portable Hole. Snag a Rhino token. And Portable Hole. What? Modern is such a strange format. Like, just look at the pure amount of power that's on the battlefield without us doing anything. <laughs> like, we played lands, and we have four 10-10s. Our opponent played violent outbursts, and they have four... They had, what, six 4-4s four without doing anything. Without doing anything at all. I prefer not seeing any zero mana cards. Even free in a sense. From Rhinos or Voke Elementals. I'll pass, please. At the same time, I would say, like, is this a uh, Soulless Chaler's chance to shine? Can't cast non-creature spells from exile. Yeah, I think this might be the time. Soulless Chaler seems really good. Basilis Scholar. Interesting. Not Shadow Sphere. Unfortunately, we can't name Rhino or he would. This seems like a matchup where we could actually combo. We might actually have a chance to combo. Great watching night, but my partner texted me. She's on holiday in Kenya. She's going to bed with a family of elephants outside her window. Wow. By the way, we should do uh we should do more to get magic to more countries, say in Africa. I definitely agree with that. Like <sighs> 
for Magic being a worldwide game, it's certainly more supported in some places than other places. Like, we've seen that even just recently with with Wizards cutting back on their work, workforce and kind of just... And kind of just cutting the entire South American team. So even though Magic is played everywhere, there's certainly more that we could do to try to to try to get the game in other places. And I think a lot of it, I think, starts with with Wizards. Like we even see it, even like the EU lags pretty far behind North America. That might also be true too. That uh, I hear that from I hear that from people even in uh Jeremy Michello, you're uh, you're someone from Brazil isn't isn't like a a booster box kind of a ridiculously high percentage of like the average salary in Brazil or something I've had a few Brazilian players uh that have that I've talked to that have basically been like <laughs> It's so expensive here. Like, sure, boxes are still $100 US or whatever, but that's like the average monthly income is $300. Or Those numbers are, I'm sure, not correct, but it's like a booster box is like a ridiculous... It, it's a huge investment for the average, the average person, yeah. So I think that maybe the thing that makes the game more accessible is just making the game cheaper. Like, that might be... This uh, the same thing that would help make it more accessible here, honestly, would probably help in in some of those other countries too. Like we just we just need to be. And the sad thing is, ooh, this is this is kind of a combo hand. I mean, we could get countered, but this is kind of the full combo. Yeah, we're gonna try it. We're gonna go for the combo. Moonbus carrot can get the enduring renewal, and then we just go for it. I mean, if anything, we see it going the other direction, right? <laughs> Just looking at recent prices of sets is like it's it's heading in the heading in the wrong direction. Prices are actually getting more expensive. What makes magic better is a game piece, but not an IP. Or that makes magic better is a game piece, not an IP. Wizards has to juggle the value of the two constantly. I think we had a chance to combo. I mean, we got to see what disruption our opponent has. Or maybe we're just dead to rhinos before it happens. But let's mill some rhinos. Let's mill some rhinos. Bound it. Land. I mean, I will give wizards a lot of credit for... I will give wizards a lot of credit for actually... Or maybe this isn't... <laughs> actually wizards but it's like read pop or whatever but whoever's running the magic cons the recent changes we got for those are actually surprisingly good for the community like kind of shocking kind of shockingly good for the community which kind of blows my mind because i just don't expect that from from wizards i expect things to get more expensive i expect things to to head in like a negative direction so i think that's uh, it's pretty awesome to see that it actually, eh, okay, okay, that's fine. It's pretty sweet to see that, uh, wow, brought in the blood mirrors. That it is possible for things to get less expensive. It doesn't always have to be getting more expensive. Milia. Well, Moonbath Cleric, the question is going to be, does our opponent have interaction next turn? Like, can they interact with our... Can they interact with their Enduring Renewal? If not, we actually really, truly pulled off the combo, finally. Uh, enduring Renewal, go. Go, 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 go. Dries, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dominary Booster Box is exactly 65% of the minimum wage. Wow. The minimum wage for how long, uh, Jerry Bicello? Like, how does anyone, how does anyone play magic there? Is it just all, like, super upper class people? Like, how could you do it? How is it possible? That's, wow. So is magic just exclusively, like, a super duper mega upper class game in countries like Brazil then? Yeah, I mean, I guess counter uh, counterfeits or proxies or whatever. Um, own it. 
going to ice one of our lands. Obnoxious. Well, planes. Mill you. So we can't combo this turn, but we can tutor up another. So we, ooh, found, uh, milling the Brazen Barber is nice. We can tutor up another and do a renewal. So the next two turns we can try to go for. Opponent only has a single blue source. Ooh, mill of footfalls too. The random mill has actually been kind of good. Get rid of Enduring Renewal. Pass the turn. Opponent. Hey, what's up, Arch Burglar Lord? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see ya. Oh, yeah. Magic is way too expensive here, too. Arch Burglar Lord for the 38th month. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup TV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But being 65% of the monthly minimum wage, that's like... Could you imagine? Like, that's that's like mind-blowingly expensive that's like half more than half of the money you'd make for a month at minimum wage in the u.s it's obviously not cheap but uh if the minimum wage is ten dollars an hour it varies from state to state but say it's ten dollars an hour a booster box is like a day's minimum wage maybe a day and a half or something rather than like two or three weeks so even though yes it's way too expensive here it's like kind of blowing my mind how expensive it is in other places we had a student from brazil working here in the lab next stars tried to explain to him uh on the, his last day this week but it was too late to really capitalize on it hmm is fruity pebbles your favorite cereal ah, what oh boy cereal tier list <laughs> well enduring renewal I'm more of a cinnamon, cinnamon toast crunch, I guess. I don't really eat cereal much anymore, but cinnamon toast crunch is probably my favorite. Well, here we go. Alter the brood. Opponents mostly tapped out. So the trick is stone creel serpent for zero comes into play. Mills you enduring renewal says bring that back to your hand. And unless our opponent has mill hate, which would make me absolutely cry. Or I guess instant speed by surprise graveyard hate we got the ggs we got the ggs combo time combo time what is the what is the best cereal what's your favorite cereal chat also a reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom if you need some magical cards you get them over at cardkingdom.gob says mtg goldfish actually we're not gonna actually do this but I'm curious. I'm going to pull this up just to, so I can see the see the images. We're not actually going to do a tier list of, of this tonight. Corneas, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so cereals that I actually like. Frosted mini wheats. Cinnamon toast crunch, really good. Frosted flakes, I like. Those three, those three are very good. Those three I those three I actually really like. Honey smacks. I mean, I guess a lot of sugary breakfast cereal kind of tastes good. There's not like, there's actually not like a, there's not like a, a lot of bad sugary cereals, right? The bad ones are like the, the ones that like my grandmother would eat. Like, well, I don't even know. They have horrible names. Like, I don't know, pile of oats or whatever. Like <laughs> some of, some of those that are just like not sugary at all are kind of gross, but, um, what about or what about cornflakes? Do you like corn? Oh, actually, Lucky Charms. Okay, if I was maybe we are doing a like super quick tier list. Frosted mini wheats, I really like. Cinnamon toast crunch, I really like. Lucky Charms, I really like. Brazil, Brazil also has very high tariffs for anything not made in Brazil. So is that part of why it's so expensive? So I think those would be those would be my favorites. Like those those three probably. The rest, I mean, I guess Frosted Flakes. Like, those would be probably my four favorite breakfast cereals. And then the least favorite is probably, I don't know, just something, like, special. Anything that's not sugary is kind of gross. <laughs> I mean, it's fine, and I know it's healthier, but just, like, uh, whatever, Special K or something. And these are really only the good ones. They're, they left out all the, all the really gross ones, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> Frosted Flakes. I mean, all of those are horribly unhealthy, I'm sure. There's a local employment agency who's been extremely unhelpful. I haven't heard a word from them. Uh, I called this morning, accidentally got a hold of the operations manager. He's hooking me up with the interview before the job even gets posted elsewhere. Hey, make a magic arp. That is awesome. Your, uh, your diligence is... It's paying off. It is paying off. Ooh, double H, you know. Sounds pretty bad. I think we mulligan. We got no... Oh, my goodness. A Johnny's Welcome in Portable Hole. That's also pretty bad. All right. Well, this will try. Ooh. The question is, what do we put to the bottom? What do we put to the bottom? So, Enduring Renewal Walking Blister combo pieces... Oh, let's be greedy. Let's put Smith and Snow Covered Plains to the bottom. Actually, it should probably be Smith and Dark Steel Citadel. All right, try to keep the combo. We wanna, we want a combo. We want a combo. We've done it once. We gotta do it again. Hey, good game, Scary. Thank you for the match. I mean, that's that's super awesome though. Like being able to uh, to get in like that before it's public and being posted everywhere. That's a really big deal. I think that'll. That'll definitely give you a, a a advantage, I would say. So definitely feeling definitely feeling hopeful for you, Magikarp. The fact that you had actually got to talk to someone with like sort of a position of power, the operations manager, and they hooked you up with this early interview, those seem like really good signs. Hey Seth, with your Gleeful Demolition budget deck, any reason not to run an indestructible artifact or lander too? So I actually I actually tried both of the the artifact lands. So one is Dark Steel Citadel, the colorless one. And I ended up ended up being stuck without double red mana to kick goblin bushwhacker too often so the the upside of it being able to like blow oh my god that's walter the brood wow we just need we just need mana that is all we need um so the upside oh this would be a great time to hit dark steel citadel come to think of it <laughs> come on dark steel citadel Oh, spring leaf drum is kind of like a land. We'll take a spring leaf drum. Um, so the upside just wasn't enough because uh, it was ruining our our uh, primary game plan. So then I tried the tapped one, and the tapped one's just too slow. So even though the synergy is cool, my experience was I didn't think they were good enough for the deck. AreaUSW, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super review. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the t huh? Is this a punt? You don't usually see the hammer just get run out. They must be. They must be playing for a pure steel. Oh, bound it passes. Oh, we wanted to land here very much. Um, so. Hmm. Uh, do we let our opponent draw? Oh, uh, we can't really play the walking ballista, can we? Well, I guess we just spring leaf drum. Pay the one. Pay the one, alter the brood. Yeah, I guess they could be playing Magnetic Theft. I haven't seen Magnetic Theft in a while. That was like OG hammer time tag. Now, spring leaf crumb. Grow the dork. Alter the brood. And please don't counter it. We really need that. All right, pass the turn. So we are set up. If we draw a land, if we draw a land, we get to combo. We get to combo. Oh, putting scissor. That would be hilarious if this was a scissor hammer deck. Hey, Seth, here to ask you, have you ever considered that astrology is space racism. <laughs> I have never considered that. I, <laughs> wow, okay, they do have the hammer. I don't know enough about astrology to, I am so confused. Oh, is Tomer streaming? I didn't even know Tomer was streaming. Oh, that's not a land. Oh wait, we're we're gonna be dead, right? Because they can get up. Oh, they can get trample. 
Oh, we needed the land and we didn't hit it. I'm 99% sure we're dead here. Because Urza Saga, wow, we needed... I mean, we're on the mold of five, and that was the problem. If we had got this hand on the mold of, uh, mold of six, I think we just win. But we're going to end up one, one land short. We can tutor up an Urza Saga for next turn. But if our opponent gets Shadow Sphere and equips it, we just die. And I'm, I'm sure that's what they're going to do. About it. Floats of mana. Oh, I guess they can get Colossus Hammer and also make us die. That that also makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, shouldn't have mulliganed so much. <laughs> Is it safe or not to unman colored artifact lands in modern? I think they should at least be tried. We have a lot. Of, we are getting more and more artifact lands. We got the tap dual lands. We have the. Yeah, I I don't even know what that means. I'm so confused by that question. Um. So we have the tapped, the tapped uh, indestructible ones. Those have been fine. We've gotten some random ones, like the one that makes treasure tokens. Uh, we have Dark Steel, Citadel, of course. Those are fine. I would lean towards just running them out there. Like they still get wrecked by Karn. They still get wrecked by artifact destruction. I think there's risk, especially since the early ones are destructible. Um, the old G ones would be, you think so? You think they'd still be busted? I mean, I guess it gives you a critical mass, but you still have... You still have some of the same issues, right? Where you still have the issue of just, like, getting got by interaction. So I tend to... I don't know. Would they be safe? Would they end up being safe over the long term? Maybe, maybe not. Are they close enough that I think they're worth uh, trying? I actually think they are. I mean, Bobble, Bobble does draw you a card. Hmm, we'll keep this. We're not close to comboing, but we do have a lot of interaction, which hopefully is good. No one expects Path to Exile anymore. We're like this close to Path to Exile being, <laughs> being manatized. We're just like, people are like, huh? <laughs> Mono white, instant speed. Exiling? What is this sorcery? Well, yeah, you probably shouldn't have a Zagarda's aid. That's a that's a pretty good magic card. A cast would be very quick, <sighs> but there would be more risk to it. Like you get more explosiveness, but at a cost. And the cost is you can get even more wrecked by you can get even more wrecked by interaction. Oh, Stone Forge Mystic. About it. Going digging. Come on, combo pieces. Coldra complete. Well, we gotta get rid of that stone forger. We die. Hey, thank you for the cheer. Was playing a store pro earlier, playing mom, went against a Yarok player. They didn't rest it after that you cast Yarok and Om um, on their turn. None of their ET bag effects work. Uh, we're still at the point where Alice Yorn kind of gets people. It still kind of gets people. Well, Dark Steel Citadel. Ingenious Smith. Go digging. Wow, another four land pile. Take a Dark Steel Citadel, portable hole. Get rid of the Stone Forge. Pass the turn. So we need one more. Oh, we need two more pieces. We're actually a million miles away, aren't we? Pound it. Takes up the Zaga. Yeah, this has been a fast match. <laughs> is everyone excited that Wizards is acting on feedback for Magic Cons by Vegas should be Comic Con level? I'm really, I'm really excited about it. We were just actually talking about that a few minutes ago, that it's, oh God. <laughs> oh God. Hammertron assembled. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, grow the smith. That is a lot of hammers. Moon bless cleric. I do not know what to take here. What do we take? The problem is we need two pieces. We got the Ballista. We need Enduring Renewal. And we need Altar of the Brood. Hmm. 
Pauper has been pretty miserable since there are 16 different artifact lands. They banned the fifth card out of Affinity Deck, now A tier instead of S tier. Although at the same time, Pauper doesn't have the Rekia cards. Like, Pauper doesn't have Stony Islands. Pauper doesn't have Karn the Great Creator. There's, in, car, in formats that have rares and mythics, there's cards that are essentially just like, two mana, you lose the game if you're playing all artifact lands. So I think that's part of what makes it especially busted in a format like Pauper, is you don't have that level of answers. When in modern, I would be... I would be so scared to play an all artifact mana base because you know some percentage of the time your opponent's just gonna be like, oh, sideboard Sony Silence, and you just essentially just straight up lose the game on turn two. Or Kataki, yeah, there's there's several of those answers. Um oh, it. Wow, they hit the pure steel. They hit the pure steel. That is bad news. Okay. Um, sure, and sure, and also sure, and unblockable, and path it. Ha ha! Man, I tie this back! Although our opponent just gets to put everything on the pure steel paladin, so this is a short-term solution. We need combo pieces. We need combo. Oh, Ornithopter. It loses flying, though. Okay, opponent equips. Equips. We can chump block for a minute. We can chump block for a minute. Oh, Urza Saga. Okay, okay. Equips. And on the pure steel, and that's a lot of threats. And I think. Who draws three hammers? Seriously, now. Who draws three hammers? <laughs> Who does? Who does that? Who does that? All right, is there any way we win this game? Oh, we need so many top decks. All right, I guess we pass. Pass and try to chump. So we're going to have to just draw Enduring Renewal, basically, I think. About it. Takes up the Saga. Goes to combat. About it. Attacks, attacks. Well, we will block. Take 12. Quantium! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop to you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's a good top deck. Giver of runes. Oh, we need a we need a miracle. We might be able to live one more turn, but okay. Oh no, I don't think we can live one more turn. Pona passes. Jano, that's gonna do nothing. Yeah, that does it, right? Uh... Yeah, we're just dead, unfortunately. Finally able to catch a stream after many months. Glad to see some modern. Hey, good to see you, Quantum. Welcome, welcome back to the stream. I think that's just it. So we make a construct. The problem is if we cast Ballista, then we can't combo. So we're also just dead. Like once we cast the, we need the Ballista as a combo piece. The one way we could win is next turn Saga goes off. Saga gets Alter the Brood, and we just luckily top deck Enduring Renewal, and then we combo win. If we play Ballista, we can triple jump to live for a turn, but then there's just no card in our deck that... There's no card in our deck that does anything from there. Like, we could technically jump out block enough to stay alive, but then we're just 0% the next turn. Huh. I'm trying to think if there's anything we could possibly... I mean, we can... We'll play it out to the... We can we can play it out to the end just to see. But I don't think there's a card in our deck that matters here. So play Walking Ballista, Grow the Smith. Play the Darksteel Citadel. Pass the turn. Like, in theory... And actually, this probably doesn't even work because I should be able to get Trample with Urza Saga, but... Uh, we 
So actually, as we were starting to play with walls, um, I talked about this in your renewal deck, and we did not one, not two, but three polls because they kept getting tied, and people voted for uh, enduring renewal. So we actually didn't end up playing the the mom walls deck yet. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to do that another stream. Hypothetical question: Standard prints a card that's a green green vigilant three three that taps for green mana. How playable is that card in the current era? Probably pretty good. Yeah, there's the shadow sphere. Sure, 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 sure. Um. democracy democracy got us um i think that card would be good like two mana mana dorks aren't good two mana three three beater i think is i think is okay but i think if you add all that together that it's a two mana three three beater that can also add mana in the same turn then i think you have a very good card like it's one of those cards where the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts if that makes sense like each individual half of the card is probably medium but together i think you have a a likely standard stable vigilance yeah vigilance is what really puts it over the top because then you can attack with it and use it on like turn three which is that is huge i think it'd be a stable i don't think it would show up outside of standard maybe in like eh. Maybe it could make it in, like, Pioneer or something. You missed my message. Hey, sorry, Ario. I had to take on more artifact lands being printed and uh, why it would be fair. Oh, oh, no. I'm looking. I'm looking. Can you can you copy and paste it? So this hand... Is this hand good? Seems more okay than good. Is Shiny Shoal Modern White Humans deck real? Price spike like crazy. It's a good question. I I had that same question. You know what? I think we keep this on the draw. I had that same question. I saw that the price spike from like free to like 20 bucks. I think it's a little less now. But uh, I, I honestly don't know. I've played against the deck once. Ooh, goblins, eh? I've played against the deck once. I know we got some I know we got some bad promos in Magic. Whenever I think of bad promos, the first thing which which is worse? <laughs> I we need we might need to do a poll on this. So when I think of bad promos, the first thing that comes to my mind is the the FNM Serum Vision. Uh I don't, I don't even want to talk about what's going on in that art. Not, uh, not safe for work. Um, so that's the first thing that comes to mind. However, the second thing that comes to mind is why is Mog Fanatic taking a dump on the card? Isn't that what that is? Like, what, it, what am I missing here? All I see is <laughs> the poor goblet is trying to is trying to take a dump in some dark corner of a cave and some someone comes up on him with a camera and he's like surprises him and like haha gotcha <laughs> oh, i'm selling this one to the tabloids mog fanatic <laughs> oh. well let's a jano i don't think we want to i don't think we want to kill the we don't even want to touch that. That like, Mog Fanatic lives. We're staying far away. <laughs> it does have a a Moby Dick quote. As if his chest had been a mortar, he bursts his hot heart shell upon it. <laughs> no, that's what he's just bursting his hot heart shell. That's that makes complete sense now. <laughs> it's. He's a mag fanatic bursting his hot heart shell. <laughs> oh, magic art. <laughs> Phone it, Auntie's Hubble. <laughs> I won my full art foil double strike internalized cat from FNM. I like that adored Fouster to death. What what else? If we're gonna talk about the most questionable, the most questionable, not like in a funny way, not like, oh, this is banned because it was, you know, horrible way. Um what else would be on the list with with Mog Fanatic, FNM promo, 
and we need to hit some lands one of these years. Mog Fanatic FNM promo and Serum Visions FNM promo. Wasn't it with FNM promos? <laughs> oh yeah. Yutabi Orangutan, yeah, that's a that is a classic. Yutabi Orangutan definitely is a classic. <laughs> Sword of the Age. Oh, I gotta look that one up. I don't know. I actually don't know what that one is. I don't know what the art is. Sword of the Ages. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a sword. <laughs> okay, it's it's kind of a sword. Earthbind. Earthbind is a little, a little, a little uh, PG thirteen at least. Opponent getting in with the Mog Fanatic. Boy, we're getting. We are getting dumpstered by God. Oh, another Snoop. Oh, that's game. That's a Harbinger on top. Okay, removal. We need removal. Or is the Saga's not removal? Oh, we waited too long to hit our land drops. Well, Ranger Captain of Eos. Boo! We started off so good with this deck, too, and we've lost the last two. Well, how about Walking Ballista Part 3? I wonder how aggressively... I wonder how aggressively we should mulligan with this deck. Like, should we be... Should we be mulliganing all the way to, like, five? I mean, we mulled five last game, and it didn't work, so... Yeah, so this is just infinite. Harbinger gets the Kiki, puts it on top. We can hope that the Kiki's in hand. <laughs> That's our one. Yeah, there's a Kiki. All right, infinite. Yep, 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 yep. Scoops it up. Hey, happy Thursday, uh, Correxy. How are you? Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hmm, goblins. Goblin. So we gotta stop the combo. We also have to not die. Like, ideally, we just combo off. Ooh, Pithy Needle might be worth it. Probably better than Soul Guide Lantern. Our opponent's deck should not be very good at interacting with us. But can we find our combo? I am not sold. I do not understand this, Johnny's Welcome. I don't get it. I don't understand. Infamous small Japanese tournament. Why? What is your meta like that you're playing in a Johnny's Welcome in your main deck? <laughs> I still have my looting playmat from Strixhaven Mystical Archives. That art is cool, funny. I like that art. I know it was I know it was very controversial when it was first printed. I still like it. I still like the Faithless Looting Mystical Archive. I guess I I don't know. I have pretty high tolerance for like I don't know. To me it looks like a it looks like an adult swim show. It looks like the animation from some sort of Adult Swim show from, like, 15 years ago. That's all I can think of. Like, the mixture of, like, the very realistic person with the, the kind of cartoonish background. I I like it. I, I know other people absolutely hate it, and that is that is perfectly fine. Art is very subjective, but I like it. Long nap! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we had a Johnny's Welcome... So I guess the idea is you can tutor it up with Moonbass Cleric if you have the Enduring Renewal combo and you can gain infinite life instead of instead of winning with Mill. I guess that makes... I guess as a tutor target, it makes some amount of sense. Like, I guess that does make some amount of sense. You can get it with Moonbass Cleric. The problem is we just, like... The combo doesn't get set up that consistently. So I think that's the... I think that's the challenge is we just don't all that often actually actually get the whole combo going oh we probably want these sanctifiers just for just for living uh going on to johnny's welcome got on one more stone coil uh moon bus Carrick smith sanctifier is just a good creature against a uh, rakdos deck really wait no one does anyone in chat like that art? <laughs> Am I the only one that likes the the mystical archive? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. We will keep. This is a full combo. How greedy are we? I mean, pretty greedy. Removal to the bottom. So we need a land. We need a land and we need to not get got by 
by discard, basically. Alter of the Brood, go. Ranger Captain of Eos snags us our zero drop. All we need is a mana and not to get disrupted. And to live until we can cast... Oh, Skirk Prospector. That can make our opponent's deck pretty fast. Ooh, Portable Hole, okay. Uh, well, Portable Hole. Get rid of the Prospector, Milia. Play Jano, Milia. Two lands down past the turn. We need one more land. We need one more land. We need one more land. About it. Secluded Courtyard. And I think it's just the artist style, too. Snoop. Oh, no. Oh, no. This means we could die next turn. Land, please. Land, please. Oh, we draw the Ballista. Okay. Well, will mill you. Oh, if we had a way to have a permanent come into play at instant speed. Well, Ranger Captain of Eos. Mill you. Tutor. A Walking Ballista. Pass the turn. Hope we don't die. About it. Blood Moon on top plays a cavern on Goblin. Oh, if they play Blood Moon, then we need a Plains in specific. Not just any lands. It'd have to be a Plains. What is the best card art for you? <laughs> I like some goofy old art. Opponent gonna... Oh, no. Crate make. Well, that does change things. That can kill our Altar of the Brood. All right, all right, all right. Well, now we are kind of far away from... Kind of far away from doing anything. One of my favorites is just Horrible Hordes. It's just like... It's just like the goofiest old art that you could ever imagine. Like, it's just so ridiculous. So, uh, it's I don't think it's good. I mean, it's fine. But I just like a lot of the absurd art, uh, old art. I think is my favorite. Uh, portable, well, okay. Portable hole. Get rid of the snoop. Walking ballista. Run it out. Well, now we're back to needing two combo pieces. We're kind of seeing the, the downside of needing three combo pieces, I would say. Like, that's kind of... That's kind of one of the challenges. The best artwork in MTG is a fuller... Amonkhet lands, and it's not just because I started playing that set. I mean, isn't a lot of what makes the best art for someone nostalgia? Like, when you started playing or a card you have a special connection with based on, based on whatever. But I feel like that's a lot of what makes the best art for people. It's not, it's not actually what is the best, like, technical... The best technical lines, or even the prettiest, or whatever, the most pleasing to the eye. It's it's something that you like. You, you have a crawl worm that you played with your whatever friend or brother or sister or something when you were a kid. It's stuff like that that makes that makes the best art for people. So I think what the best art is is really. Oh yeah, we better kill this. Is very dependent on on you. The, I mean, I do love the Panharmonicon art, but I don't even think, like, the pan... It's so funny, because I don't think the Panharmonicon art is, like, that... It's fine. I don't not like the Panharmonicon art. I think it's... I think it's sweet, but I like it because it's Panharmonicon. Like, to me, it's one of the, the best pieces of art in Magic, but that's not because I think it's, like, some some masterpiece. It's because is one of my favorite cards, Whatever happened whatever happened to the Phil Foglio uh secret layer drop? Do you remember them announcing Oh Eureka is really sweet. Do you remember them announcing a Foglio secret layer drop like two years ago and it just never it never happened? Ooh, Oromancer, that's uh that's Rebecca Gay art, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's Rebecca Gay opponent. More blood mooning. Wow, this is this is a slab fight. <laughs> Neither deck really quite doing their thing. Opponents run all the blood moons. Oh, wait. Oh, that's actually probably pretty good. 
Enduring Renewal actually is probably fine here, even without... Even without the combo. Because we can just keep playing and pinging with Ballistas. Opponent takes it to four. So that's Ballista for two. Pass the turn. Opponent did a virtual one. <laughs> art is subjective, but other art is 100% subjectively better. I mean, I will stand behind Mirage. Mirage Mountains being the best mountains. Oh, John Avon. The John Avon. Honestly, just the, the basics for Mirage overall. I think they are hard to beat. Like, not even just the mountain, but pretty much all the... I wonder if I can pull them up on here. Have you ever seen the beauty? The beauty of, of the Mirage Basics. They're so good. Where are they? Revise? Ah, there we go. Like, pretty much all of them, most of them are really good. Like, I would say... Um, I would say this mountain is like the iconic one. The the John Avon Mirage Mountain's really good. The islands I'm kind of indifferent to. I think the islands are the worst of the Mirage basics for me. I think the forests I really like. A lot of forests uh are very North American. You got the big like kind of stately whatever oak trees or whatever. I really like how these are like beautiful flowering like luscious uh, maybe like african forests uh they just look different to me like the trees are different it's it's a very different perspective on a forest that i like and then oh the planes are all really good like all of the all the different animal versions i really like and then i would say like there's a couple of really good swamps but this swamp oh the bob eggleton swamp one of my favorite one of my favorite swamps in all of magic like isn't that just a beautiful... And you got the old border. Oh, everything about the Mirage Basics are just... Oh, absolute S tier. As good, as good as Basics get. John Avon Flower Swap. Well, uh, what one is the Avon one? This one? No, that's Eggleton. Eggle... Wait. Oh, it must not be from Mirage. The Lightning Bolt... The Lightning Bolt Island's really good. I like... I like lands that have something unique about them like that. The lightning. There's a lightning planes, too. Uh, from, oh, no. Is it masks? It was it has the lightning planes. The lightning planes is another one of my favorites. Oh, boy. Okay. I mean, full combo again assembled if we can live long enough. Alter of the Brood. Walking Ballista. Enduring Renewal. We are close to going off about it. On the play, going to six, Den of the Bugbear, and Ether Vile, Frightening Magic Card, and passes, well, Snow Covered Plains, and Ultra the Brood, please don't kill it, pass the turn. About it. It was really cool for them to bring back lands in, Dominary Mastered. That is, uh, that, that was, ended up being really sweet. I don't know, the one thing I didn't like about it is, well, I don't know, I was actually kind of fine with it. <laughs> I, I do think there's some argument to be had with the conversation about, like, how, uh, do we need magic cards to maintain their value and so forth? I think there's some conversation to be had about whether certain, like, artworks should be not reprinted or certain, like, frames or special printings. I would much rather see that than more reserve list style stuff like i want cards to be printed to be cheap but if you want to not ever reprint a specific artwork and print a different artwork i think that's 100 percent fair game um but at the same time it was pretty cool to see some of these greatest of all time greatest of all time arts coming back uh for the first time what is the deck that we're playing do so <laughs> we sometimes win like a janky beat down deck but the real goal is we are an infinite enduring renewal combo deck. Oh, silent clearing is huge. And there is a pretty decent chance that we might get to see the combo next turn. So the combo is, well, let's play the walking blizz to Milia. 
So the combo is we need Enduring Renewal, this very weird janky card originally from uh, Ice Age, but Enduring Renewal, uh, it makes you play with your hand revealed. If you would draw a card, you got to reveal it. And if it's a creature, you got to mill it. Otherwise, you get to draw it. The important ability is when a creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return it to your hand. So what happens is we play into our renewal. We have our Altar of the Brood out. We can cast this. Okay, Matron. Sure. We can cast this Walking Ballista for zero mana an infinite number of times. It dies, goes to the graveyard, comes back. So we'll mill our opponent out with Altar of the Brood. So that's kind of the the main the main goal. We also can just kind of beat down with random like Walking Ballistas, uh, constructs from Urza Saga and so forth. Pretty sure we're going to see the combo go off right here though. Like, I think it is likely. Opponent gets a Snoop. Opponent's tapped out. That means they shouldn't be able to interact. They can vile, but I don't think they can vile in something that fizzles the combo. So, well, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Urza Saga. Mill you. Oh, wow. Mass Vandal. Oh, no. Oh, no. I didn't think about that. That is technically a... Oh, they don't even have green mana either. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to go for it. Uh, Enduring Renewal. Combo piece. <laughs> Please, not another one of those. And combo time. Hey, what's up, Jivim? How are you? Is this a classic Enduring Renewal Ornithopter Ashdown's Altar Fireball? <laughs> Kind of an updated version, an updated version of that. This is Enduring Renewal, Alter the Brood, and then cast Walking Blister or Stone Coil Serpent a infinite number of times for zero mana to mill the opponent out. That's the that's the goal anyway. We'll see if our opponent can violin something that beats us. Mill you, Enduring Renewal triggers, Walking Blister returns. Oh, okay, I don't think they have an answer. Cast Ballista, zero mana. Oh, oh no. Okay, just a snoop. That's fine. Pony just wants to see what we're milling off their deck as we combo them off. <laughs> okay, uh, Ballista, zero mana. Mill you out of your Sting Scorger. Is our opponent really going to make us do this the whole way? <laughs> Walter the Brood, Enduring Renewal. All right, 41. We got The countdown is on. The countdown is on. 41. 40. <laughs> we might be here a minute. So how how is everyone's days going? How are how are you, Shivam? How's uh how's life been? Are you doing a are you doing a command fest? I assume you'd probably be doing West Coast like Seattle. Well, Milia with the ballista. Milia with the ballista. I mean, there's no <sighs> I mean, maybe our opponent has an Emrakul in their deck. That would be a reason for them to sit through this. If they actually have Mill Hate in their sideboard, if they have, like, an Emrakul that would get around this. I mean, although it wouldn't really, right? Because we have the Sanctifier in Vex, so all of our opponent's red and black cards will be exiled forever. So even if they could shuffle their library back in, it's going to be shuffling back in nothingness. Ooh, Belmore is a very, a very scary card. It takes a lot of time. Can you win two games in this time? Uh, I mean, I think the answer is yes. 99% of people that you play against, uh, we've already won a game, right? We're already up a game. Like, most people you play against on Magic Online are going to scoop when they are 100% dead. So, either opponent's not 100% dead because they have Emrakul or... They are the, the like, 10% of people who don't actually scoop to people's combos. But it's kind of a courtesy thing for the most part on Magic Online. Like, normally, if you're just dead, you're... The the unwritten, like, rule of the, of the client is that you just scoop to your opponents. When are you going to play uh, Mono Wait Amiria? I could watch that deck play forever. I do love Mono Wait Amiria. We played it on... We played it on uh, the YouTube not that long ago with uh, with uh, with Mom, our new Elish Nord. 
my opponent is really sticking this out. I think we could do this for two wins if we had to. Like, we still got 14 minutes on the clock. It doesn't take that long. It's just not, not the most entertaining thing for stream. This is the part of the video I'd be editing out if we were on YouTube. <laughs> this is the part where it'd be at X8 speed or whatever. Uh, well, it's actually a super old, super old combo deck. There were different pieces for the combo, but Enduring Renewal combos have been around for almost as long as Enduring Renewal. Like, it is a super, super, like, old school, early 90s combo card. Saga will give it a chance to do it again two turns from now. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think this is, it's just over, though, right? I honestly have no idea. Like, look at our opponent's <laughs> look at our opponent's graveyard. Even if they have a way to shuffle it back in, they're shuffling in nothingness. They're shuffling in a whole pile of land. So that's all they're gonna be drawing. Like all their combo pieces are gone. Oh yeah, I think there might have been a goat magic where we played like the 1990s version of <laughs> of this deck. Uh, Fruity, I think it was Fruity Pebbles, right? Some sort, it was, was that the original name of the combo, Fruity Pebbles? I'm pretty sure. Back when, back when every combo, back when every combo, um, had a, had a serial name for no apparent reason. The good old days. Could they be waiting to hit another Crater Maker to get rid of the altar? The problem is their Snoop has Summoning Sickness. And their Vials tap. So I don't see... I don't see how they can do anything, even if they mill into the perfect card. All I can think is having a random Emrakul to fight mill, which some decks do. But I, I don't know what our opponent's trying to do. Do you think Power Creep will ever surpass the Power 9? Mm, no, well... <laughs> I mean, I think you can argue that Oko's stronger than... I think you could make an argument that Oko's the strongest card in Magic. Or Loris is the strongest card in Magic. So, nothing... Oh, that's what... Th <laughs> that's what they were doing. Okay. Okay. So our opponent actually did have an answer. They... <laughs> oh, they did! They were waiting in hopes of finding a goblin trash master. Wow, are we going to lose from here? Yeah, they, they did get us. They were waiting in hopes of finding a goblin trash master. Is there a chance we lose now? I mean, I guess there's a chance. Vial. Oh, no. Are we going to go infinite and lose? Takes it up. Cavern on top. That's fine. Oh, no. <laughs> Interesting. We could have blistered their matron, leaving them without Snoop. Matron's an ETB trigger, though, right? So, like, they, they get to tutor with it either way. <laughs> I mean, we did exile a lot. I don't know how many Kikis they're playing. It might just be two. We might have exiled... We might have exiled their combo. I mean, we're probably still good, just not as spectacularly as we were hoping. Oh, 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 I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I guess I I didn't really have Trash Master on my, on my radar, but I guess I should have. <laughs> I was thinking our opponent was just, was just, uh, was just kind of trolling or like salty roping or had Emrakul, but I, I wasn't thinking that they actually had Trash Master in their deck, but yeah, I guess I should have thought of that and then killing the Matron would have been worth it. How about play it white red with some impact tremors instead? That would get around mill hate. So the challenge of that plan, and that is a that is a fine plan, but the challenge of that plan is 
One of the nice things about this deck is we have a lot of ways to tutor up our pieces, and Urza Saga is really good at finding... Oh, that was a smith getting milled. Urza Saga is really good at finding... Um... Alter, although not as good at finding... Not as good at finding uh, Impact Tremors. Other than that, though, it would work. Until Wizards reveals Magic Arena all over the... <laughs> Wait. Until Wizards reveals Magic Arena all over on a 128-bit client or better to have a random shuffler. I just can't do it anymore. I can't stand the rig matchmaking either. Interesting. So what is what is your uh, what is your issue with the matchmaking, Parasite Hunter? So the, the random shuffler... I think that not random is just an issue in best of one, essentially. Well, I think we on thin ice to get rid of the snoop. In best of one, we know it's not, we know it's not random. Like wizards is upfront about that. That it's, I mean, it's random-ish. <laughs> it's like random, but they intentionally draw you multiple hands. Let's pithing needle. So I think we pithing needle trash master, and then we can try to combo again next turn. About it, gonna violin something. The Fury Guru! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so wow, they have Harbinger. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Okay. Let's see what our opponent has left to do. I think we're still gonna end up winning this, just not as cleanly as we were hoping. Opponent tutors up what? A matron? Well, pithing needle. Name Goblin Trash Master. Walking Ballista. Run it out. Hit ya with the Sanctifier. Yeah, Harbinger doesn't do much. We can always snipe it, too. Like, we can use our ballistas and get them back to our hand thanks to Enduring Renewal. My only problem with Arena is that it isn't the Moto and the economy stinks. Someone, <laughs> someone, I think it was Joe. We had Joe Dyer, who does This Week in Legacy on the podcast. Um, we had on, we had Joe on the, the podcast this week. We should, unless our opponent has another answer. We should be able to win next turn. And he mentioned how, like, one of the challenges of Legacy is people can't switch decks. So part of the reason why you see Is It Deck, like Is It Delver, uh, even if Is It Delver isn't very good, is is because people buy the cards for a deck like Is It, and they're so expensive to switch decks that even if Delver becomes less good than it was before, they're uh, they're gonna stick with it and they're gonna keep trying it because they don't really have any other option. And it struck me how hilariously similar to Arena that is, where you have some of the same issues where people like buy a tier one deck and then they don't actually have the option to switch to another deck because it's so expensive. Unless you want to put in a bunch of money or spend a bunch of time, it's so it, it's not that easy to switch decks. So it's kind of funny how in some ways there are similarities I would say between <laughs> between Arena and. Uh, uh, let's put this for mana. Between Arena and uh, the reserve list, honestly. Ophidian! Welcome... Uh oh Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ringleader. Gonna try to draw some cards. I mean, our opponent is fighting. He's fighting the fight. All right. Saga triggers. This has got to be it. We'll get an altar of the brood. We will play and alter the brood. Mill you. And now we go back to combo in. <laughs> Mill him out and walking ballista. For zero mana, mill you. Mill you. You bought a Martin. Oh, Martins are, Martins are my favorite guitars. 
I absolutely love my Martin. Uh, that is that is awesome, Ophidian. You will love it. I know some people that really like Taylors. Those are out of the people I know that play guitars, acoustics. Like some people really like Taylors. Some people really like Martins. I'm a I'm a big Taylors are fine too. I've played some really nice Taylors, but I I love uh I love Martins. Yeah, that was honestly. <laughs> That was my justification when it came to buying a, which for me was a very expensive guitar. Uh, it was basically, if I buy this, I will, I will literally have this guitar for the rest of my life. Like I will be able to play the blood moon guitar is my, uh, one of my electrics. Yeah. So I do, it's actually behind me on the shelf. So I have the, I, that's actually the, my main electric right now. I don't have a, I don't have another electric at the moment, but yeah, the blood moon guitar is my, my electric. And then I have a Martin acoustic that I absolutely love. Have you ever played guitar on stream? I don't think I have. Not really. I don't play, I'm going to have to, I don't play nearly as much as I, as I used to. I still love guitar and I still love music. I just, uh, I haven't, I, that used to be what I am for, what I do with magic now used to be kind of how I was with, with music where it was, oh, that's cause I'm on the, on the green screen. Let me see if I can, you've never seen the blood moon guitar. Really? I can probably hang on. Let me, let me see if I can get it. Just suck it. All right, here, here is the beauty, the beauty of the Blood Moon guitar. So the Blood Moon guitar, one of my, hey, what's up, Elf? One of my, this is, I think, my most prized magic possession. This was, oh my goodness. So this was a random gift. It's from Nash Guitars. Um, <laughs> they actually, oh, it's so sweet. So they just, they randomly made this for me. They said, hey, Seth, we got a gift for you. The art, I know it looks like Blood Moon, it's not only looks like uh, Blood Moon, it is actually the Blood Moon artist. I, they sent me pictures. They actually flew the artist who did Blood Moon into Nash Guitars to paint the Blood Moon onto this guitar. It's like a one of one exclusive with art from the actual Blood Moon artist. Oh, it's, it, it is my favorite magic possession, like by far. It is so, oh, it's so cool. So yeah, it is, it is super, super, super sweet. So. Yeah, I I can never. What's his name? Franz Volwinkle, something like that. Let me see if I can pull up his name. Uh, I think it's Franz Vol Volwinkle that did the original, the original Blood Moon art. But yeah, so it is oh, my most prized magic possession by far. We have a new donation from Irish Rager. Hey Seth, I just want to ask. Um, if you had heard of Hell Q in Historic Brawl, I play a Sethis Enchantress deck and seem to have been placed uh, there as every deck is either five color value, Kinnon, Rusko, or Walker Control. Feels like it needs a shakeup. Uh, it is a real thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so cool. I've never actually met the artist in person. Um, so, so yes, big shout out to Nash Guitars. It was like two or three years ago, maybe, maybe four years ago. It was like a little while ago that they actually did it. Um, does it turn non-rock genres into metal when played? Pretty much. It actually, it actually plays well. Nash Guitars makes uh, nice guitars. Yeah, it is one of the, like how many, I'm still just blown away that it is a thing that there's actually, I mean, it's awesome that I, have it and it was a gift but like the fact that there was a guitar with the blood moon artist that actually painted the blood moon on it like the the fact that that exists just blows my mind do i still have the stray cat it's no longer a stray cat it is now it is now officially cc my my second animal am i coming to richmond this year are you going elf i'm trying to figure it out do you play guitar? Any chance we get some tasty licks on stream? I do. I I don't play as much as I used to, but we'll have to we'll have to do a guitar stream. The thing is, like, I've always when it comes to uh, when it comes to music, I've uh, I've always been more of an entertainer than a than a uh, than a pure guitarist. I would say. Um, what are we doing? Hmm. We got the, I mean, we could finish with a four one with this deck, but we'll have to do, we'll have to do it. Are you going to 
C C C is the cat, yeah, for uh for couch cat because because the couch uh is where the cat lived when it snuck in. <laughs> uh, the cat chose to be here in the couch. Uh I'm considering it, Alf. Are you are you considering going? I got to I got to decide. I got to decide like this week if I'm going, which I guess tomorrow's Friday, right? <laughs> So I guess I gotta decide, like, now if I'm going. Do you do the music for Goldfish, like the outro, podcast outro? Um, no, that's just random, random royalty-free music. Could be fun to do that. And LGS Round here is trying to get RFK to come do a signing. They have exclusives our RFK. Playmats hasn't been around lately. Ooh. Well, hopefully, hopefully they can get that figured out. Oh, the other thing, did you see, I, I mentioned this on Twitter. Did you see this? Did you see this post? So this was a post on, this was a post on Reddit, not to a magic Reddit, to a legal advice Reddit. They, I wanted to see if you thought this was an actual true story. So basically, I'm not going to read the whole like six paragraphs, but basically the TLDR is, I work for a store that sells Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic, Pokemon, that kind of stuff in Florida. Uh, we have a store and a warehouse. I always worked in the store. Then one day my boss was like, hey, come work in the warehouse. But, you know, can I trust you? You better keep a secret. And he went to the warehouse and uh, apparently they were just opening tins of cards, which I guess would be Pokemon and boosters of cards and pulling out the, the valuable cards and replacing them with less valuable cards, resealing the, the packages and then selling the product essentially. And the person was trying to figure out what to do about it. My question is, oh no, in fact, do you think that's possible? Like how, how likely do you think it is? Dogamith with the gifts up to Electora. Oh, you're going to go to Richmond? Hey, awesome. Uh, awesome, Shivam. Oh, now I'm going to have to try to go, don't I? Uh, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soup for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is it actually possible that uh, that someone could be... Like, did the, did the physics work? Like, can you open up stuff well enough and reseal it well enough that you could get away with selling it in a store without people... Without people realizing it. Well, here's a saga. The problem is I don't know if we live long enough. Like, we can combo in two turns. However, we might die now. And we can't afford to play the stone coil because we need that for the con. Oh, I'm actually stupid. Oh, this was a punt. Well, if we die here, it's my fault. We could have played the Stone Coil, because then we could have Ranger Captain another copy. So not running out the Stone Coil as a chump blocker was... was a mistake. Scale up. I mean, if we die, if we die here, we deserved it. Yep. All right. Well, I will, I will take the blame. I was thinking that we needed the Stone Coil for the combo, but not thinking that Ranger Captain replaces it. Oh, in fact, in fact is a scary matchup. Well, we'll bring in the removal. Unban Blazing Shoal. <laughs> Unban Blazing Shoal. I actually think, like, did you see what Unfact just did to us? Like, they just straight up turn two killed us. I, I think to me that is the best argument for unbanning Blazing Shoal. I think if, uh... Hmm. I think Infect is so good at killing on turn uh, at turn two now anyway. I don't really think there's any reason to keep Blazing Shoal ban. I don't think that Blazing Shoal would see play. <laughs> like, I think that Blazing Shoal, maybe there's some wacky combo deck, but I don't think that Blazing Shoal would show up in Infect. No one's going to put Progenitus in their, in, their, in their deck now when they can just kill with Scale Up and Friends. So I hope Blazing Shoal gets unbanned. Well, land go. This hand's not bad. We have a portable hole, so we can kill the turn one threat. How tightly does Wizards Police booster packaging materials? I honestly don't know the I honestly don't know the answer to that. 
the ignoblest of hierarchs. Oh yeah, Shivam. I I love uh I love talking to Shivam on his podcast, the Casual Magic Podcast. Definitely worth uh, checking out. Interesting conversations with with some of the most interesting people I'd say in the magic community. Well, I think we just <clears throat> portable hole. Get rid of the hierarch. Removal spell one down. How many Pokemons do I know? I know so little about Pokemon. <laughs> uh, I know, honestly, for someone who knows a lot about ma magic, I know <laughs> nothing about Pokemon. I know nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh. My experience with, I, I have the tiniest bit of experience with Yu-Gi-Oh. Back, back in the day, when I used to buy and sell collections, um, there was this huge collection of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and it was really cheap. They wanted like... 250 bucks or something for like thousands of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and <laughs> and I ended up buying it because I knew that it was just like a really good deal the price that they wanted for it was just super cheap so even though I knew nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh I ended up buying this collection and oh it was the worst mistake of my life like Yes, it ended up being a good deal and it ended up being profitable, but I probably spent a week of like <laughs> trying to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! The rarity is really weird in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like none of it, none of it made any sense. None of it made any sense to me. It was just so much work because I didn't understand the game. I did see that someone bought the seances from Seans Guy, which is hilarious. Although apparently I watched the video... Apparently it was not from Seance Guy, but from someone who had bought them from Seance Guy or something like that. Yeah, the, the rarity was super hard because it would be two cards that were exactly the same and it would be like Pot of Greed or something. And one of them would be like Super Duper Ultra Rare and another one would be like Super Duper Ultra Common and one would be worth a lot of money and the other one wouldn't be worth anything. And it like, it just would make no sense to me. Like it would... <laughs> It would, it, like, I, I don't understand. As a Magic player, this makes no sense. Why is the same card, like, why is one of them a common and the other one's, like, ultra rare or whatever? Ooh, a standard deck. I need more spicy standard decks. Uh, well, Silent Clearing, I think we just... Ruined Halo. Ruined Halo... On Ink Moth Nexus. If we can find the Ultra of the Brood, we can combo here. Pass the turn. The Spell Skite's going to make our uh, our path a little bit worse. Standard Mondrak Horde. Ooh, let me, let me take a look. Spirit of Companion, sweet. Sten, interesting. Vindicator, Mondrak... Ooh, it's a duplicity Mondrag deck. That's that is spicy. Trying to trying to double double up, make a ton of uh, a ton of vindicators. That is a that is a hilarious idea. Ha! Ah, uh, the even duplomancy is always. Oh my god! Oh my god! Vesuvian Duplomancy has been so hard to pull. Wait, is this during our turn? Oh, no. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because the spouse. Oh, yeah, it kind of matters because we're giving me a mana. Oh, that's what we get for looking at deck lists. <laughs> oh, I thought this was our opponent's turn. Oh, no. Yeah, that free mana is going to be a bad thing. Well, unban Blazing Shoal because we're about to die. <laughs> Have you ever played a commander deck with multiple commanders before? I'm considering building one. It looks fun. I have played partner commander decks before. I will say the only thing to be uh, warned of with partners is they have a reputation of being very strong, especially the original partners that can just partner with anything that has partner. They have a reputation of being really strong. So... Keep that in mind. They're kind of considered to be like CDH level commanders. So if you go all out building around them, they could be too powerful for your playgroup potentially. So that's just something to keep in mind. Not that you shouldn't build around. Oh dear. 
Not that you shouldn't build around them because they're really cool, but uh, just know they're they they might be considered too powerful for some of your uh, for some of your play groups, depending on what the rest of the power level is. Also, like there's some of the partner with cards that are kind of in between. So, have I ever played partner and companion in the same deck? <sighs> I can't remember. If I did, maybe once on Commander Clash. I almost feel like that was a theme of a Commander Clash. So it's. It's possible that we did it once on Commander Clash, but I I honestly I honestly don't remember. Also possible that we did not do it once on Commander Clash. Altar of the Brood. Altar of the Brood. We need the Altar of the Brood and we win next turn if we're alive. Which is not a given. Springleaf drum. I'll take the Springleaf drum. Play the Springleaf drum. Milia. Oh, actually, don't milia. We don't have the we don't have the altar of the brood. That's our whole problem. Uh, yeah, pass the turn. We're gonna top deck altar, right, chat? We're gonna top deck altar. It's coming. It's coming off the top right now. <laughs> wow, that's a interesting, interesting screenshot. Venerated Rot Priest, Frog, Frexian Might. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is uh, that is pretty impressive. When you go off a of Duplomancy, you really go off. That's for sure. About it, Fire Up Ink Moth. No pump spells, please. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. Hits us. Hmm. Oh no. We gotta we gotta wait a second. We gotta make our opponent think that we might have interaction. So chat, <clears throat> how uh how are things going today? Did I tell you my attempt with Korean barbecue pulled chicken wet? Uh you did not. How'd it go, Magic Arp? On a level of 1 to 10, what is the level of sexiness of all the goldfish members you included? <laughs> uh, ever, tens all around, of course. Um, all right, that's long enough. You can draw your card. I got to build a Geth deck. I feel like Geth has, uh, has potential. About it. Hits us for two. See that delay? They got the pump spell, but that delay making our opponent a little bit. Okay, so here's what we do. We tap this for mana. We sack this land. We draw altar. Oh, we're not going to have enough mana. We draw altar of the brood, and then we draw land. Well, we draw the land, and then we draw the altar of the brood, right? Right, right, right. Altar of the brood, please. Just an altar of the brood. That's all we ask for. That's it. That's all. <laughs> Walking Ballista. Well, okay. That is not in Altar of the Brood to win the game, but... Walking Ballista could help keep us alive. Walking Ballista grow the smithy. And pass the turn. That is a that is a pretty spicy geth deck for sure. Baneblade Scoundrel. I don't even know what that is. What is Blade Bane Scoundrel? When it becomes blocked, each creature blocking its negative one, negative one until end of turn. When it becomes blocked, each creature is negative one, negative one. When a creature blocks it, dies as controller loses a life. Spicy. Interesting. Oh, that looks uh that looks fun. Necessary theory. I do think Geth has I do think Geth has potential. I think it's got potential. Three mana to reanimate every turn seems pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Richard Richard is pretty is pretty boomery, so <laughs> Gra Grandpa Richard. <laughs> did you see the YouTube comments that gave an idea to your name to a new series like you did with the Mondrag Token Limit since Phil's Brewer's Kitchen, they recommended you name yours Olive Garden. <laughs> I think that name's taken. Although I could probably get uh 
PVDDR to, to guest if I named it that. <laughs> uh, I discovered one potential trick with Geth. Distortion Strike. Are we dead? Okay. Six poison. Are we just getting Rot Priest? Are we not even going to get one more draw? One more draw for the win? Do I still do Meme or Dream or did that die? I have not done it much. It kind of died because for a long time, Wizards stopped publishing lists uh, from Arena. And now that they finally brought them back, not that long ago, but they have stopped publishing janky ones, which is probably a good thing overall. But now all the lists are like pretty normal looking and tierish looking. Well, ping the Ink Moth. If our opponent has free pump, like, oh no, do they actually have free pump? Apostle's Blessing. All right. Well, kill the Ink Moth. This is it. It all comes down to this. We have one draw. It needs to be Alter of the Brood. It needs to be Alter of the Brood. Why don't you play some Pauper sometime? I mean, we'll probably play some Popper at some point. It's been it's been a minute. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So yeah, that's been the big issue with Memer Dream is Wizards just uh, not publishing as many lists. But I'm sure there'll be more in the future. All right. Oh, come on, come on, come on. We got one draw at it. One draw. Alter the Brood. Come on. Oh, Ranger Captain. Hmm. Can Ranger Captain give us another draw? Most likely not. Hmm. Is there anything we can do to not be dead? Yeah, maybe we'll try to do some Popper at some point. Did you see my earlier comment about playing more Legacy or Vintage? I'd love to see more of both of them. Yeah, maybe with the new Legacy bannings. It might be time to play some more Legacy. I do always have fun whenever we play Legacy. Uh, so we can Ballista kill a Rot Priest. We can Ranger Captain try to sack it, but most of their pump spells are instant speed, so it's unlikely to save us from the Rot Priest. I don't know what other... Hmm. The problem is if we use Ballista, then once again we have the same issue where we're down. Odd object! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the 71st month in Unseen Spectre. For the 70th month. I'm doing wonderfully. Big scoops here for you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, that... Wait, did that resolve? Oh, it did resolve. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, so we... Well, Ranger Captain can't stop the rebound. Is that our best bet? We could sack Silent Clearings. I mean, maybe it's just Ranger Captain. Ranger Captain... But they haven't made land drops. You know they got pump spells in hand. They gotta have pump spells in hand. Hey, see a Mega Magic Carp. Good luck with the job stuff. I'm, uh... I'm rooting for it. It sounds like there's uh, some good possibilities in the future. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's our only option. I think the odds of this working are like 10%, but better than better than zero, slightly, <laughs> very slightly. I mean, in fact, they just build around pump spells, and them not making land drops makes me very worried that they have pump spells in hand. Like, seems like an obvious one. Oh, we just couldn't find the altar. I mean, and really, that is that is an issue with three-piece combos. Like, even with all of our tutors, sometimes you don't find all three pieces. That is just... 
the nature the nature of playing a three card combo deck all right so we'll sack the ranger captain oh my god it worked okay 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 so technically not dead yet although in cast pump spells at instant speed so we still might be dead we still might be dead. Rado Grinder, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, come on, deck. Come on, deck. Alter the road. Alter the road. Opponent. No, no, no. Okay. Wasn't it an alter of the brood? Wasn't it an alter of the brood? Oh, please don't be. Now I'm going to be sad if it was. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, we are dead. We can't. The Rob Priest actually paying off. Well, double Rob Priest. Single Rob Priest. Man, whatever. Double Rob Priest. Actually super bad. Reality Chip Eggs. I mean, a historic Brawl deck with Reality Chip that plays kind of like an Eggs deck, if you're interested. It's a lot of fun and very dirtly. Uh, more historic. Yeah, all right. GG, in fact. GG. Yeah, more historic brawls on my list. It's been a minute since we've had a historic brawl video, so we're going to do one of those at some point. Oh, so what do we learn about this deck? We played some pretty wild games. We finished off uh, three and two. So we did post a winning record, which isn't, isn't bad. Not bad. Not bad. A Mewtwo. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We playing werewolves and zombies and explore when shadows over... Uh, Innistrad Remastered comes out. Super bright for Grizzle Brandon Historic and Snapcaster. I mean, I gotta play some Huntmaster of the Fells. Huntmaster is just so much value. Need more Pioneer? We have so many good formats these days. Standard's good. Pioneer's good. I actually have this, uh, this Bring to Light Landfall Elish Norn deck. I've been meaning to play for a minute now in Pioneer. So maybe, uh, maybe next week's stream we'll get some Pioneering in. All right. One treasure chest for our 3-2. What did I cut from this deck? A bring delight? Probably a bring delight. Uh, bring to light. Moto. Moto. Eh, whatever. I'll fix that later. Let's crack our treasure chest. Treasure chest. One of one. We get. Eh. Razorbirds think it's a good card. I don't think it's worth much anymore. Angelic Guardian, not as good of a card. So yeah, maybe we'll do some pioneering. We got so many formats we gotta get to. We gotta get to Legacy and Vintage. We gotta get to Pioneer. We got Standard. We got Modern. But what do we learn about? What do we learn about uh, Enduring Renewal? And I mean, the deck didn't perform poorly. I would say that the deck performed pretty well. Although I will say, I will say. It is a three-piece combo deck, and we got to see the upsides and the downsides of being a three-piece combo deck, where uh, sometimes it's fine, and we find all our pieces, and we combo off and win, but as we saw in that last game, if our opponent can pressure us, and we don't have that much time to dig for combo pieces, sometimes three pieces is just, like, too much for us to... Uh, for us to actually put together. So I think that is a, that is the nature of being a three piece combo deck. You're going to have a little bit less consistency, but overall, I mean, being mono white means it's not super expensive. It is unique. It's cool to see a super duper old combo piece from the earliest days of magic actually, uh, actually show up and do some work. But anyway, I think that brings us to the end of our stream for tonight. So reminders on the way out the door, replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Is it possible to build a burn infect deck? <sighs> I think it would probably be a control deck. I think with some of the new with some of the new pieces we've gotten, uh, like, oh no, uh, the Pharisees card, uh, whatever to Pharisees, they like give a poison counter of Veraska's uh, scorn, Veraska something. Oh, these new cards, I gotta remember all the names still. But you could build like sort of a control deck, but there's nothing that's like 
an infect lightning bolt. It's like here, one mana, three infect counters or something like that. So it's very inefficient. So usually ends up being in a more of a control deck. Uh, otherwise, normal YouTube, tons of stuff coming up on there. And one more reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash Goldfish. Most importantly, thanks to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular. And I appreciate y'all hanging out tonight, playing some modern, having fun. I love y'all. I hope you have an amazing night. Have a great weekend. And we'll be back on Tuesday to have some more fun. And I'll try to bring some more CC pictures or maybe even just get CC live on stream. So we'll have to wait and see. But on that note, everyone, I love y'all. I hope you have an amazing night. And I will talk to you soon.